Yeah, hold on. What about this? Oh yeah, how about that? That's that's awful, isn't it? How about this? Terrible. No, you want the low light adjustment where it says adjust for low light. You want you, I you do want that, that whacked. I know that looks dumb. I know. <laughs> you see what it is? It's what the about? it's the LGBTQIA oh, plus minus. <laughs> here we go. How about that? Wait, was that flag stock in Zoom? Yeah. Was that a stock flag? Oh no. Come on, Cyprian. Wake up. It's 2024. Here we wow, go. bro. Have we really reached that point? You know it's I weird. guess it's time to stop using Zoom. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Royal Path. I'm your host, Andrew, and I couldn't really think of a solid question tonight, so I'm going to just roll with, I'm going to ask Cyprian and Father Turbo, what is like, um, I think we've talked about this before with like an album, but what is like a movie that you can think of that is like perfect? You wouldn't change anything about it. Like, movie? Every, yeah, movie. Yeah. Fifth Element. Problem. Fifth Element. Oh. The fifth Element. There's so much I would change about that movie. No well, way. I Okay. Cyprian, have you watched it since becoming Orthodox? Mm, no, but I still wouldn't change anything about it. There's a lot of nudity in that movie. There's a lot of it. And there's like, I don't know, like it's it's a good movie. There's a lot of nudity in it? Yeah. I don't recall there being any nudity in it. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, whatever her name is. Mila, Mila Jovovich? Yeah. But can you see anything? Oh, yes. 100%. Because I just watched it with my wife like two years ago. And at the end of it, she was like, I don't know how I felt about that movie. It's great. I love really? the plot. It's super cool to watch. And there's like a lot of sex jokes, like a ton, like a ton, a ton, a ton. So it is what it is. It's a great movie. Mm, it's like yeah, I don't I, I mean, look, from, it's from a, a movie in an I mean, we're talking about movies. We're talking about movies. Right. I, I don't know. Is there. Can a movie. I mean, it's a movie. Let's put it like that. At the end of the day, the medium is the message. You know what I mean? If I'm if I'm if I'm looking to if I'm looking to pursue. Look, I, I would say there's not a lot of not a lot of uh, not, not a lot of monasteries probably build movie theaters into the monastery. <laughs> Okay, that's Orthodox all I'm going to I'm just going to say that. I'm just going to go with that. <laughs> so we're talking movies here. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> when I was, when my, my friends and I were younger, we would always do the, um, the smoke you like that. Where he's like, <laughs> yes, you know, the, yes. Yeah, the guy yes. freaks out at them with the police are trying to. <laughs> yeah. I still haven't seen it. You haven't seen Fifth Element? Oh, it's, it's good. It's good. It's a good one. It's, good. it's definitely like. All my previous criticism aside, it's a it is a really really good movie. And there's a guy yeah. actually, not too long ago, who came into my uh, work. Uh, he's a client, and he acts exactly and he talks like this, like Gary Oldman from the film. Oh, Zorg, Zorg, yeah, he's like, yeah. and he's like when he was talking, he was talking like this, and with like the mm -hmm. mouth and everything, it was just like a, something happened to his jaw or something because he could like every S sounded like that. Like a shh, and he had like a really strong, it like you almost expect him to be on the phone and like his hair, like his, the blood or whatever is happening in that scene where he's talking and he's sweating mm -hmm. so much, like his pomade's coming out of his hair. Um, what about you? No, I think I think it's blood. Is it blood? It could be. I think I it's remember. blood coming out of his head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. What about you, father? I'd say the Warriors. Uh, oh, yeah. That's a good one. That's a really good one. Man, I can't yeah. once more think about that movie. I'm like, I really need to rewatch that movie. That is a real good one. It's um, good. Yeah. Uh, well, I would have to say, because I just rewatched it not too long ago, and I was like, I think this actually might be like the most perfectly well done movie is 1917. Mm -hmm. I just rewatched it not too long you, ago. I think you mentioned that. I have. I have not I have not watched it. I've not since seen it. since December. I watched it in December and I have been like I was watching it for the second time 
And I was always, I was like, I legitimately have no complaints about this movie. There is a, and spoilers. So if you care Yes. about the spoiler from a movie that came out about five years ago, Yeah. there is, because the whole thing is it's, it's not one, but it's supposed to be one continuous long shot. So you Okay. see people at the beginning, they're sleeping, they woke up and they walk down the trenches, talk to someone, go up the trenches, go up and then across no man's land. And it's all one long continuous shot. Okay. And there's a part where a character gets, you see him get stabbed and then die. The whole process Okay. of him dying and accepting his death and being afraid and telling his friend, like, don't tell my mom I was afraid. Like the blood starting to seep out of his body and then his death. And that's all one long shot. And then his friend having to carry on. And it's like, it's absolutely, and this time I kept picking up on stuff I hadn't. And there's, again, I'm very sorry for spoilers for a movie that came out a while ago, but there's this really, really well done scene where he's behind enemy lines and he's in a French town that is currently occupied by Germans. And he's a British, British, British soldier. Mm -hmm. The And the flare lights everything up, and they look at each other. wait, are am I having deja vu? Have you told that? To, did you <laughs> tell I us this have last I? week? I <laughs> I talk about it so much. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Father, thank you now. Thank you for it because because I was Yeah. like, I was like, am I am I I have publicly what's stated. happening? To, what's happening to me right now? I have publicly stated that on this podcast, I'm an old man because I repeat my stories like a lot. But I think it was from last week. It was. I think it was, and I think it was the end of the show last week. It was. It was. It's so funny I'm. because actually, I think that's why Andrew keeps me around. <laughs> he needs somebody to say something. For real, like I need someone to just like take the cane and like poke me in the side, and I'll start talking about something else. It's like, No, it's I, Star I Wars. honestly, bro, I'm so glad, Father. Thank you, because Andrew. you almost sent me into like some sort of a psychedelic flashback. Like I was right on the verge of it because I'm I welcome. was like, what's happening? <laughs> what's happening? You're welcome. I feel like I've heard this before. <laughs> Have I really? Have I not? Am I just imagining this is something wrong with me? Thank you so much. Oh, I was starting to get anxiety, father. <laughs> I know. Seriously. I was starting to get anxiety. Thank you for pulling me out of that. Cause that was wild. Oh my goodness. Okay. Is that where I interject David Goggins now? Just to complete Now. the oh. <laughs> now. Wow. Some Well, dude, a brother now I've from got the now church. I've got to watch it though. Now I've got to watch 1917. I mean, I I would highly recommend it, obviously. But some dude from the church at some point, like last week, I was just like hanging out doing something, and suddenly he sent me like a clip of David Goggins. And then he was like, This is who this guy is. I was like, Oh, so you're watching the episode and being like and hearing me say that like, I have no idea who this guy is. But that is that is one thing I've noticed about myself is I repeat my stories a lot because I don't really go back and listen to the podcast very much. Mm. Occasionally I do. And um, I've noticed I repeat my stories a lot. And also the other thing I've noticed is I, I use the wrong words a lot. I like I've last never week. I've not noticed that. Last week I said something because I was trying to show my wife the part where I was talking about father seizing control of the entire parish, like getting doing away Father with. Palpatine. Father Palpatine, yeah, I was trying to show her that, and I said, this is the part where Father concedes all his power, but that would mean him giving up power, and I was just like, wait, did I just use that word like that, and what I meant to say was Father, like, seizes power, but I was Seizes like, power. seizes, but I said concedes, and I was like, do I do that a lot, and I, and I was like, I don't think so. it doesn't matter, I mean, I've I never think noticed it. I've always been more into, like, the, um, The, what is the connotation of words rather than the denotation? Because I think Yeah, so sure. much more is said about the language, like connotation. Like it's like maybe because I'm just like a more creative thinker, but it's like people can use like words that aren't real words, but they can use it in a sentence and I can get what they mean. Like, you know, that person Oh, sure. trandoctolite or whatever. And I'm like, oh yeah, sure. And like, I just, I'm like, I got what, I got what you mean. Like, and through the context of what you're saying, I get what you're saying. Just, it's Well, like, isn't that how new words enter into the lexicon? and this is what I've been talking about and I won't go on, but the No, English go ahead. language sucks for a number of reasons. But one of them Yeah. is it's like, you have these words in like Swedish. that's like, 
the the feeling of like walking alone in the woods and like Mm -hmm. like at night or something and there's Mm -hmm. like they have like a word for that and the problem with the english language is like we don't have enough of those i don't think somebody may say oh actually no you're wrong there's all these words but like i i i'll be going through my day and i'll think like i can't think of a situation at the top of my head i'm like they should there could be a really good word for this like like oh Mm. okay here's one Sometimes, like, my wife will spend just as much time getting a coat on a child when it's cold yes. out yes. as it would to just take the child inside without getting the coat on. You know what I mean? Yes. So it's like, it's almost like the child is spending just as much time, like my daughter or whoever is spending just as much time outside because we're putting a coat on her and like zipping her up and making sure that everything's on okay. Wait, why are you putting the coat on the child outside rather than putting the coat on the child inside and then taking them outside? I'm talking about like maybe out of my van, out of my oh, van. Oh, 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 oh. And I see, going I see, into I see, say I see. church okay. or whatever. Yes, yes. We're spending okay. more time making sure that the coat is on and the hood is up and zipped up than I would for me to just like whisk her, just grab her real quick and just mm-hmm. like walk inside and put her in. I was like, there's got to be like a word for this. It's like, doing work mm. that w- it would just be quicker to just not do the work or something you know what i mean this is what i'm saying is like there's not like it's almost like we're missing this whole poetic but whatever this is not what we're here to talk about and we're actually here because i think you guys actually have stuff you do actually want to talk about so let's get to that well, where, well where do we start how about in florida where do we start where all good stories start in florida in florida yeah isn't oh, that- the I the, am- a- the aliens, the aliens <laughs> thing, the aliens at the mall thing. Yeah, I mean, so that- weird. That's that. I'm just gonna jump in just real quick. Go I might ahead. be able to burn through real quick, but you know, um, gosh, like it's time. We talked about this before. You just cannot trust your eyes on anything. Just don't mm-hmm. even bother. Mm-hmm. Craziest deep fakes exist now. Do you wow. want to do that? Do you want to do the guy who was like this 30 set? I actually found yeah, yeah. some yeah. dude, uh, dude. I keep saying, I want to say dude now because I was, I, I spent an afternoon with a, a friend of mine who we were, we were duding each other back and forth. Dude, well, I'm dude, in Missouri. Dude. I can't talk anymore. So, <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. Dude, you want to talk about our savior <laughs> here? Let's do this. Uh, okay. I think. This is it. This Ethan Mollett guy for people I'm who haven't seen. This. All on board for dude, by the way. I think dude is a great word. It's like it means a lot of. Di- oh, all right, here we go. OK, can you see? Can you guys see this? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Can you see it? OK, it's not. Does it have anything like in the way of it? Or yeah, anything? there's like a box. There you go. It's is gone. it better now? It's better. It's now. gone. OK, I had to move everything to the bottom. OK, here we go. Uh, tell me, can you hear this? This is a completely. Did you hear that? Yep. Okay. Fake video of me. The AI used 30 seconds of me talking to a webcam and 30 seconds of my voice. And now I have an avatar that I can make say anything. Don't trust your own eyes. Okay. That's crazy. But can I, can I take it up a level? Let me take it up a level. Because then he was like, hey, guys, how's my Hindi? This is my Farzi video. Hai. AI ने वेबकैम पर मेरी बातचीत के 30 सेकंड और मेरी आवाज के 30 सेकंड का उपयोग किया और अब मेरे पास एक अवतार है जिससे मैं कुछ भी कह सकता हूं अपनी आंखों पर भरोसा मत करो हाउस माय इटालियन दैट्स ये मेरा दैट्स द वन दैट फॉर मी डज लाइक टू लाइक हाउस माय इटालियन ही इज लाइक ओह डज ही या या आई डोंट सी द हाउस माय इटालियन आई डोंट आई डोंट सी दैट वन या बट दैट वाज द वन दैट टोल्ड मी अम that Joe Biden like, dead for two years. Well, I was going to go in that direction. Basically, what I was going to say is that um, what we understand as the democratic political process is now officially over. It's over. Like, mm-hmm. it's done. Mm-hmm. There's no... If what we're doing, if what we're basing... Because because you think about, like, what... It's too easy any entity can roll out as much slant slandering scandalous stuff against anyone that they possibly want and if we're if we've never seen this person in real life 
And if it's not taking place in real life and we're only just going by what we see in the media about somebody, it's over. It's I don't over. know. How, I don't know how we I don't know how we continue. It's over. And I just want to wrap up this this little thing here. So, like, I don't know. I'm sure there's somebody who's going to jump in, but I haven't seen any. No one's seen any footage from from Miami. No. So. I'm not saying that's the case, and maybe by the time this hits and people see it, something comes out and whatever. But until then, I'm fine retracting. I'm not making an absolute statement. I'm just speaking as as a man. But it's like that whole thing that everyone's watching could have just been a whatever. Like, where's where's the where is the person from Miami who's like, yeah, I was there. I mean, it's it's a mall, in Miami, right? Mm -hmm. Like. Where's the person even who's like, yeah, I was there. None of that happened. Like, there's well, nothing. There were thousands of people, Father. Like, there's nothing. So, mm -mm. so we have a couple options here. The whole thing is like, you know, some crazy like deep fake movie thing, which is a possibility. Whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, we're we are further along than anyone even like imagined in regards of like the the tyranny. Techno like technocracy lockdown, which that's a kind of a real thing too, because mm -hmm. you know it's like I don't know what where's the person is like, man, I've been trying to contact my auntie in Miami, and she can't like our messages aren't aren't, aren't getting through. Like I don't know, mm -hmm. but it's just weird to me that no one is like, here's the cell phone footage. My dad's a police officer. My boyfriend's sister's brother is a police. You know what I mean? Like I'm sure it's there. I'm not on the. I'm not scouring the webs for it but you would think it'd be just so easy like we shouldn't have to go through the dark net to find something like that you know what i mean so i i don't know i father i don't know if uh i don't know if it is out there to be honest with you yeah i don't know either and and that's what i'm saying like so in some respect if this makes sense to everyone the fact that there's such an obvious void of cooperating or you know dispelling Mm -hmm. um, eyewitness accounts via cell phone that to me is more fishy than anything mm -hmm. like the fishiest thing is that there's there isn't anything saying one way or the other mm -hmm. and that's what makes me go okay now this is really fishy well right? it's the dog that didn't bark right the, the Sherlock yeah. Holmes thing it's the dog that didn't bark it's like well why why is there no yeah. and and you know what's interesting is that they showed one of the things that they showed was outside a bunch of kids beating up another kid. Now, I don't know that that was actually from Miami, but I'm like, wait a minute. You got a whole bunch of 20 somethings. Where's the self? Where's the other angle of that video? Like, I, shouldn't I there have been like 20? Shouldn't there have been 20 kids? But it's yeah. outside. Shouldn't yeah. there have been 20 different angles of whatever that thing? I'm like, none of these kids had phones. I don't understand. I mean, I didn't even see that. The only thing I've seen is, you know, the, the cop, the the whatever Las Vegas area like angle looked a lot like the angles you saw from I remember yep. seeing from from the Vegas shooting, whatever. Yep. Um, and then like random news weird, helicopter, basically. Yeah, police helicopter, and then like random weird, you know, something walking they made it look like. So mm -hmm. I'm just like, I don't know, but the like like you said, you know, the dog not barking, that is just to me, that's indicative that something's being there's some sort of ball being pitched. I don't know what it is. Mm. I don't know what it is, you know, but I, I just obviously like the the alien thing is coming up and mm. and even, you know, the, the language around interdimensional beings and demons and mm -hmm. and all that stuff is I mean, we've never it's unprecedented the amount of talk it's getting. But mm -hmm. at the end of the day, something's afoot, you know what it is. Who knows? It is a very, I hadn't really thought about the interdimensional being thing, but it is pretty interesting that for the first time that I can remember, it feels like a majority of people who are talking about UFOs are like, these are not from outer space. I feel like I've heard this more and more to where people are like, these are not extraterrestrials. Absolutely not. It seems like even amongst the UFO community, Mm -hmm. And maybe this was always the case. I know that this was always like at least a subset of the UFO community. Mm -hmm. But it seems like the people who are talking about this now are like, or, or what do they call them now? Unidentified aerial phenomenon, mm -hmm. U UAPs or whatever. Mm -hmm. 
it seems like a majority of people are saying, oh, no, these are interdimensional in nature. Mm -hmm. They're here with us. They're not from outer space. They're not extraterrestrial. And I'm not sure what that shift means. I mean, but I think seems the shift new. means that it's a, it's a good prop for people. Because you, like, look, it's not about getting people to deny God or spirituality. Mm. It's about getting people to acquiesce to a spirituality that is going to essentially usher in a, a much more acceptable version of God. The religion of the future. The religion of the future is is what is what it's doing. And I think I think this is part of the thing is that, you know, if I could try to string something together and if I'm just, you know, bring me back down if I'm if I'm kind of stuck or if I'm if I don't bring it back around. But I think this is where we start seeing, you know, it's like the fog, right? And that darkness we were talking about a couple of weeks back, can't see anything. So as you take a step forward, it's like things become more clear, but just from two steps forward, not you're not seeing five steps ahead. You know what I mean? So what I'm trying to get at is this um, reality of if possible, even the elect would be deceived. And I think that's the thing that no one's keeping in front of them. And that's that's the big trap with conspiracy theory, um, orthodoxy. You know, let's just kind of keep it in our lane. Conspiracy theory, orthodoxy, which, you know, we, we peddle in, whatever. But, like, I think I think that's the thing is that the setup we've talked about before, the setup with, with conspiracy theory and the spirit behind that is, like, I'm in the know. And I and I and it let it puts your defenses down to where you're not really watching, right? So what happens is it's like, oh, this is coming around and it's kind of like, coming around to how we would see things. And and for me personally, I'm just going to walk everybody through my kind of like process, like Rhaegar, Ride, Rydar, whatever his name was, right? From last year or the year before last, I can't remember. You're talking about the Satanist guy? The Satanist guy. That was a real time kind of exercise for me. It's like, oh, what's going on? Boom, boom, boom. And then like, okay, boom. I pick up on something, all right, and then I got to pray, you know? And it's like, same thing with a lot of these things where you see like, okay, like, yeah, this is kind of, I initially get it, but then there's something else going on. But I wanted to give it a step further with the thing that we're always talking about here, which is the, the political trap in the sense of like, yeah, you know, people like, <clears throat> whatever, baloney and... Um, Argentina guy and even Trump and it's like yeah go easy on them father or whatever you know fill in the blank because they're not perfect but at least they're against the woke or at least they're against whatever and I'm like yeah but that's the problem mm -hmm. and so it's the same thing when you start seeing these movements starting to align more and more with what we would perceive our understanding our cosmology our paradigm and it's like that's the trap right the problem isn't everything goes to pot. The problem is, you know, peace, peace, then sudden destruction. Yeah. Right. So, so we have to be looking for like, what are these things that are like, if it's lining up too much, we got to, we just got to be suspicious. And I just want to say that's not being contrarian. That's not being like, Oh, orthodoxy is the cool stuff. Now I'm out. That's, that's not what I'm talking about at all. I'm talking about literally like this deception is we have to take very seriously. And I don't care if people think I'm being alarmist right now because I realized this the other day. I was like, how many people right now, you know, how many years are we from from the pandemic? Four years? Is it four years now? Three years? Four years. Yeah. Three. Four, I four mean, we've, we've gone through four years. Yeah. We're four years from the pandemic. And there's so many people now who just think that like, and there's still people who are kind of waking up, whatever, quote unquote. But there's so many people now who they think because of the pandemic that they got it on lock. And I mm -hmm. think that's a real trap because if you're not watching, guess what? You're not watching. And, mm -hmm. and, and not watching to me means if you think that you have identified who the enemy is and like, and like all that stuff, it's like, you don't know who the enemy is then because he mm -hmm. comes as a, <laughs> he comes as a, as an angel of light. And so more people being like, yeah, interdimensional. It's like, that doesn't mean anything to me in that sense, because I think it's great on the one hand, but really probably who cares because 
right? People are mm-hmm. still looking for a Christ that's going to make them comfortable. They're looking for, mm-hmm. so what we're looking now is we're looking for someone to come and say, okay, look, interdimensional travel, space-time travel, multiverse, right? This is what Marvel's been priming us with in regards of like mm-hmm. multiverse. All of those things undermine the fundamental orthodoxy, small and capital O, mm-hmm. that keeps us, you know, in the parameters of, of the living God. Is this, are you, is this making sense what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Father, there's a, there's a, there's something here that is the paradox. That is something that I've noticed people who are just coming to orthodoxy have a difficult time. I, I mean, really internalizing and it's something that you say to people. I know that you say it to them because they've told me that you and you've said it to me. But it's this idea of as you become orthodox, I think a lot of people, they they have suffering. They feel pressed upon by demons, and that's what draws them to orthodoxy. And, and that's the right way, right, to be drawn towards Christ, to be rid of the demons, because that's what he could do. But at the same time, the paradox is, you know, and I forget who it was that just most re- recently said that you said said this to them, but it, it was so poetic that you said uh, at now as you they were starting into their being a catechumen or whatever, and they were like, now as you start into this, pay attention because you will feel begin to feel the cold of the target being painted onto your back now. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, yeah, that's that's pretty perfect that it's like, yes. But now the target is going onto your back. And you warned me about the same thing for myself, you know, that you were like, oh, yeah, you served those things. And now you're switching sides. Mm-hmm. You know, they, they're going to be after you more than they would just be some regular. Now they, they, they now they really are going after you. And so mm-hmm. I think that keeping front of mind the idea of like, and we talk about it on this show, but I, again, it's like keeping front of mind at the macro and micro. What is the real target? And who is the real target, mm-hmm. right? Like, the, it's not that like, oh, that person's not in the church and that, so they're a real target of the demons and the demon's really going to go after them not being in the church. And it's like, no, <laughs> mm-hmm. like right. you, you are the, re- that's the whole, even right. the elect, if it were possible, right? And so it's like, what, what it comes to my mind when you're, what you're talking about is kind of like with fishing, like I go fishing and we use lures, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And my friend has all these different lures, And the whole thing about a good lure is as it gets closer and closer and closer to looking and moving even in the water like a real fish. And I almost feel like what you're talking about is this thing that it's like what's being set up is like, yeah, of course, the an orthodox person would never would be like, yeah, there is no other. There's no aliens. So you'll never get the orthodox with that. So it's like, if you want this, it's it's almost like it's inching it closer to our cosmology, mm-hmm. trying to find when is the point interdimensional? I don't quite got to. What if we go to like celestial? Can we get in? Like, mm-hmm. will, will I grab? Will I get them with that? Mm-hmm. How many of them can I pull out? At what point do they think it's a really a fish? And they mm-hmm. go mm-hmm. like in the book of James, you believe in one God, you do well. The demons believe and tremble. So this, I mean, this is the thing too, where hopefully something comes into focus for people who, you know, we're all kind of like our little community, you know, we're all trying to like find Christ, whatever, blah, blah. But like, there's a reason why there's, you know, I'm just saying for me as a priest, I hammer on these things so much um, because that is the only way you can, we're going to discern. It's one thing to read, and this happens, I think people can read, like, for instance, you know, um, St. Seraphim Rose is like Orthodox and Religion of the Future, and just really read it, and I think in an unhealthy way, but not in the way that liberal Orthodox would say, like, who've never read it, and they hate Father Seraphim, but they've never read it. Not like the way that they're worried about it. I mean, read about it in the way of kind of weaponizing it externally, You know what I'm saying? To be like, no, I have the playbook. So therefore, you know, I'm going to trust in the playbook and kind of like be able to suss out whatever it is. And the problem is, is like, you know, there is no system. Right. And 
that's not there to give you a system, quite the opposite, right? It, it's there to really help you to kind of like unpack the system without then becoming some weird deconstructionist, reformationist towards holy orthodoxy. Does that make sense? Like that, because that's the art, that's the art that has to happen is that you have to be able to um, stay in the church. <laughs> you know what I mean? You have to be able to stay in the church. And there's lots of people who, who are not going to be able to do that, unfortunately, not because Christ isn't good, not because Christ doesn't love them, not because orthodoxy isn't the truth, whatever, but because, you know, they're, they're entering in and they aren't really grabbing a hold of, you know, the mast, let's say they're grabbing hold of an oar and, it's good that you want to grab a hold of the oar, but the thing is, the the arc doesn't need you to row. If if you understand the analogy, like you rowing is good, but when the waves hit, it's the oar isn't what's going to anchor you to the to the arc. The mast is. You got to grab. They look. They feel similar. Like both are pieces of wood. Both. You know what I mean. But the person's grabbing the oar. Like, no, nah, I'm going to work. I'm going to work. I'm going to work. And it's like the work you need to do is you need to grab the mass and you need to hold on to the church. So, right. So um, I just want to say this one last thing, forgive me, then, then, then let it rip Andrew, because I'll give you an example. It's one thing to want to learn about like heresies, which are very important to learn. And, but the thing is we know most about heresies by studying the real thing. So like, don't come in trying to be like, I'm going to be a defender of Holy Orthodoxy and a lot of people have that mindset. And I just want to like, with my, with my pastoral hat on, we don't need you to do that. We need you to actually hold on to the mast and actually, you know, get, get onboarded. If I could use corporate culture in the sense of like, get onboarded the right way. Like really learn St. Ignatius of Antioch. We just had his feast day last week. And it's like, I love this staying by him, you know? It's, I'm going to paraphrase them, but it's not a, I don't want to be a Christian in name, but I truly want to be a Christian, right? And it's real important that people don't want to be Orthodox in name. And, and, and what's kind of interesting, don't lose your point, Andrew, forgive me. What's really kind of interesting is like, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not trying to throw shade. I'm just bringing it out for an actual real, real, real like thing. I don't know him. I'm sure he's doing great. So that's full disclaimer. So anyone wants to kind of chop this up and do the weird deep fake, that's fine. But like, there's this guy. Um, I don't know if it's kosher to name names. I'm going to do anyways. But there's this guy. His name's like Kyle, I guess, whatever. And he's like a youngster, you know? And like, he's like kind of, I guess, blown up real quick and got like a lot of stuff, you know? Like a lot of people, like I think he's interviewed Father Peter and some other people, whatever. Maybe Jay, you know? And it's interesting watching him. And I'm just... I'm glad for him, whatever, but just it's interesting watching him in a very short amount of time go from like, he's got great editing, whatever. He's like a young guy, Zoom or whatever, so he's, he, he knows what the kids like these days. But it's like his background begins to change. He's got books. You know what I mean? He's got the patristic anti-Nacene fathers now behind him instead of whatever. So that's good. He's, there's no way he's read that. There's no way. It's a prop. No, I'm not throwing shade. I'm sure he's working through it. God bless him. But the thing I'm trying to get at is seeing some of the way the narrative and seeing some of the way it changes where it's just like, I can see just a couple, just a few key things I've caught where he's like trying to be more sincere and trying to be more, like, it's not about like knowing stuff that you have to have a change of heart. See, I find that fascinating because on the one hand, that's the right move. The right move is to move away from just kind of wanting to spot out stuff and, you know, just be external and really want to have the heart change. And so it's good that he's bringing that up. I'm, gl I'm glad for it, right? But the, tr the point I'm trying to get across is that on the one hand, the catechetical aspect, the pedagogical aspect of like orthodoxy on the internet is positive in its potential that it can actually, if you find the right sources, I would like to think we're one of them, you can actually draw closer to Christ and draw and, and get encouragement to become, you know, a, have a softer heart, let's say. That's good. But at the same time, it becomes very easy to now have an affect, 
right? And so the reason why I'm saying this is like, for instance, I'm just going to say like, I don't know that guy's situation. I, that, I think that's a good move for him. But I don't know if he's in a parish. I don't know who his priest is. I don't know whatever. You, you see what I'm saying? So it's like, you can kind of watch the right things and just go like, oh, this is the way to go. And I'm sure he's doing great. So whatever. But like, take for instance, I mean, the reality is, you know, I have a parish. You know what I mean? Like, I have a parish. I have a family. I have all those things. That's like super easy to like suss out. And so the reason why I'm saying this is because all of these things that are coming, right? Um, like there, there could be, you know, a situation where, you know, and I'm just going to say this because I know this, I know this is true, right? Because I've talked with people. There's some people where they feel like, man, you know, I get really, really good stuff from watching the road path and blah, blah, blah. Like, and praise God for it. That's great. But what happens is just one day it drops. You know what I mean? Like, what happens if one day, you know, like, God forbid, you know, whatever, you know, car accident. Like, like we don't know what's going to happen. And so the reason why I'm saying this is because I think it's so important more than ever now, especially if you're in a parish where you feel it's anemic or especially if, like, you don't really like your priest, whatever, you got to figure that out. Because the temptation now is for people to be like, I have my sources, and that's good enough. Like, we, our project should not be the source for somebody. No, like, nothing on the internet should be a source for anybody. It should be something to help feed you, you know, some kind of supplement or like whatever. But it can't be, like, there's a difference between getting a vitamin every morning, right? Versus, like, eating supper at night. Like, you can't think that you're going to survive on getting a vitamin. So I'm saying that because all that to me ties into things are getting so poisoned in regards of like, I don't even know what is what, what's real. Like the madness of none of this is real is part of where people are going to really need to be even more discerning and even, you know, less trusting. And that even means the quantity of the time that they're spending on the internet, not just the quality of what you're watching, how much of what you're watching because the medium is the message in that sense is all that tied through do you do you see where i'm getting at mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah you know that there's those little things sometimes like on like i can only speak that youtube shorts is like anything approaching what i had that's like tiktok or anything you know how mm -hmm. sometimes people like purposefully mispronounce something so that everyone corrects them and that like boosts the comments and the algorithm. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? I, if I were listening for the first time, I'd be like, it's pronounced vitamin. And I thought <laughs> for sure you would just be saying vitamin just to get people on there to say like, it's vitamin, <laughs> it's pronounced vitamin. But <laughs> I think I see what you're saying, Father, that like, so people come in and they get this notion that like, that they're gonna be like this holy warrior for orthodoxy, right? Mm -hmm. Instead, Meanwhile, they're like, I don't know, like maybe processing with the cross and they picture like big buff and they've got their sword ready to cast mm -hmm. aside the heretics and stuff like that. But in reality, they're like the frail old man and the old and like the floodwaters are coming up and they should be climbing the cross. You know, they should be like clinging to the cross. You see what I'm saying? So it's mm -hmm. like, so by you being, by you having your oar, you think, yes. You know, mm -hmm. I'm pushing the church along. Little do you know, I actually know this thing is the only thing that's between you and the water. Like mm -hmm. this thing is saving you. You're not like through your efforts. But it's going to be there no matter what. And like, I think that's one of the things that's kind of daunting about the church is like, because I've known people who have left and I'm like, we're still trucking. Like, and like, I mean, no one is complete. No one is irreplaceable. Like I'm replaceable. Like if I were to whatever, be like, you know what? I can't do this anymore. This worse that I, that I think's too hard. And you guys, we need to keep going on a royal path. You just find someone else. Mm -hmm. you, know, you just find another host. And it's like, I mean, probably right. not. I mean, that would, that would probably be the end of the show. Well, all right. Well, it's good to know. Um, hey, I'm but, I mean... <laughs> that, but that's the point is the show. A show is not the church. Exactly. And I, think, I, think, I think that's the thing. And right? I think, and I think that that's, I think that that's really like, I didn't realize how actually how incredibly dangerous that is until you just pointed it out, father, like how incredibly dangerous it would be 
for someone's like, well, I don't know what to think about this thing. Let's wait till the Royal path talks about it or something like that. Like, I think that that's, that would be okay. Cause I mean, I do that. Like I learn real time with the audience, but at the same time, it's like, no, I mean, if, if you just go to church to do like the churchly things, but then your real time is like the Royal path. Like that's kind of like, uh, I don't know. Like, and that's a real big temptation because I think that there's probably. Like for instance, let me, let me, I had a situation like a couple weeks ago at catechism, right? Which whatever, you know, I, it's, I'm a jerk, but like I, I went in on some people cause they showed up to catechism, but they weren't at Vespers. You know, and like, yeah, maybe I was going on going on too long about it. Uh, I can do that, you know, but it was just for me. I was like, I had to bring it home. I was like, look, you know, and I, you know, I was being sarcastic and everybody, blah, blah, blah. I was like, look, you know, like it's better for you to be at services and not show up to catechism than the other way around. <laughs> yeah, because because that's like the big thing here too is that like, you know, um, if if that's not a core thing we should have learned four years ago. It's like the services matter, being together matters, you know, um, and you don't really understand that until you don't have it. Right. And so it's like, and I know, I understand Samir of Egypt in the desert catacombs. I get all that, but like, those are extreme circumstances that are, you know, ordained by God for purposes like of repentance and like all that stuff. But for most people, you have to be in the services. So to kind of like not counter, but to compliment what you're saying, Andrew, is that like in my mind, I would I would hope that people like whatever, not that's about, but like we can't speak on anyone else. But like for us, so I hope that people would either A, watching us gets them to actually go to a service or B, watching us helps them to actually want to keep going to services more because they're like getting some insight to, and like some thoughts are getting connected. You know what I mean? Like that's, that's how, that's how, it, that's how anything supplemental should be used. It should be used to enhance your zeal and your, your desire to encounter God in the services and in the sacraments period. Like it's it, a it supplement. A, it's not a substitution. It's a, that's perfect. the, and, and that's the, I think that hits on the head what honestly, father, I mean, just, I mean, just laying it out. I sometimes think of, think like for that reason. And I've prayed on this so much as we've been doing this project, like, should we even be like, because there is the chance that some people will make this a substitution instead of a supplement. Like I've prayed so much, like, should we even be doing this? Like, especially as more and more, especially when I see comments of people who are like, oh, it's been so long. I'm having withdrawals and stuff like that, whether it's tongue in cheek, whether they're just being nice or whatever. There's a kernel of truth in there. Right. And I'm like, how, do, how? And it's just I just pray on it. At the same time, I know that there's fruit. But I think that it's just for us to explicitly say, like. Yeah, turn it off and certainly don't because because I think. Having been like having been in the media and having had people walk up to me in my previous life and say, you know, and say things like and now I feel. I mean, now it's like when I think about that, I truly like get sick to my stomach before it would raise me up. But like, you know, some young guy on the street walking up to me like, I know you, you're my hero. You know what I mean? When I was in just doing the worst, but it was because I was on TV. And it's like, well, it's I'm your hero because I'm famous. It's not because of what I'm doing. You look and you're like, oh, I wish I could be famous, too. And I think that desire, the milieu that we're in is, you know, people see somebody who's got some following on social media. People see somebody who's getting praised for the things that they're doing. And it's almost like outside of the content. And it's just like, oh, I want to be like that person. And so, like, they want to make content. And it's like, oh, and if I make content about orthodoxy and I do it in a slick way and do all of these things, then like I'm contributing to the church. That's a noble and a virtuous thing. And it's like, not if your orientation's wrong, yeah. not if the reason why you're, it's, it depends on why you're doing it. 
-hmm. You know, like I think about there's this guy. And I'm going to name names just because it's just one of the just one of those things. And it's kind of I get like a, a, a creepy, icky feeling. And I have ever since I first saw this guy. But he's a Catholic guy who's been like a trad cat sort of character. And I forwarded Ooh, one. No, uh, Hold, Holdsworth, Brian Holdsworth. I forwarded oh, you a video. He's got the kind of it's like he purposely tr is trying to look like the. Uh, well, is he the, like a redheaded the, kind the of Jesus guy? The Jesus. He's purposely trying to look like the European version of Jesus. Uh -huh. Like he's clearly trying to look like it, and he's got like the wood paneled thing in the back, and he talks in this very NPR voice. Yeah. And you see what he's trying to do, and he'll go for thirty minutes talking about the church and the magisterium, and never say the word Christ. Not yeah. one time. Yeah. And it's but like I look at that and I say, there's a lot of and he's got I don't know, some of his things have millions of views. And I'm like, mm -hmm. there's a lot of people watching him mm -hmm. who want to do that. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people watching him who are like, mm -hmm. I'm a fan. I want to do that. Mm -hmm. And and yet there's no way that you could want to do what he's doing and that you could do the things to be like him and have it draw you closer to Christ. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that's like, I mean, it's, it's I mean, such a, it's such a, it's a, well, it's the Royal path, but it's such a knife edge. You know what see, I mean? It, it's funny because I think this is going to be, this is going to be probably one of the weirdest conversations ever that we've had, but like everything you're saying is so true. And it's also part of the reason why, like, I don't know. I, I, I was thinking about this just as you said that I was like, it's kind of funny. I, I feel I feel at this point right now just as much, if not more so, than I felt when we started in the sense of it's like, because I felt like everything before is like, oh, this like this is kind of what's up. This is this is this thing. And now I feel like, oh, I think we're about to hit it if we're not already in it. Agreed. Does that make sense? I feel I like think we're in it. Yeah. Yeah, I think we're in it. And, and I feel I feel to some degree it's almost like all the more. Which is it's it's interesting too. Um, I wonder sometimes because, um, like for instance, I, I think for some people they might be surprised. It's like I, it doesn't really matter, I guess. But you know, I I'm a pretty frank guy. I'm a pretty frank priest, I guess. But like. Don't get it twisted. I'm not walking around, you know, hitting people in the parish with a cane and like, right. you know what I mean? I'm not like doing David Goggins with the people in the parish. <laughs> okay. What's wrong with you? Do uh, your prostrations. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Like that's not, you know what I mean? It's like, I'm, you know, I'm, shoot, I'm, I'm a teddy bear or whatever. But like, I think the thing is, is, is that's part of how I think everything can work is that the motivation is Christ and the interesting thing is as orthodoxy like is growing and man, from everything I'm seeing, it doesn't seem like it's slowing down. If, if quite the opposite, it feels like we thought more people were coming like a year ago. It's just like, Oh my goodness. It's like so many people are coming. And so it just makes me want to be even harder in the paint about like, okay, like you got to not have the affect. And I think that's what I'm trying to get at. That's why I brought out that Kyle guy. It's like, I don't know him. Like, God bless him. Like, he's mm -hmm. probably, but I know this. I know it takes time. I know that one thing people better not ever get twisted is like, ah, you know, I wasn't in the church just like from two years ago. Like, that's not, mm -hmm. I, I just think that's really important to say. Some things take time, right? Mm -hmm. there's, there's a shortcut. But I said this before, most people don't want that shortcut, right? Because the shortcut is like suffering, real mm -hmm. suffering. Not not your girlfriend left you, mm -hmm. not like you had a bad financial year. I mean, real suffering. Like that's mm -hmm. the short to, shortcut to get to some stuff. But I think that's the thing is the real thing that everyone needs to have, because it isn't a matter of just, it is, it's a matter of salvation. I feel mm -hmm. very strongly about that. It's a matter of salvation because like people, people lie in confession. <laughs> you know what I mean? People lie in confession and people lie to themselves and people, they think mm -hmm. they're lying to God. Um, mm -hmm. And so I think that because that exists, always has, when you start talking about, you know, interdimensional beings versus like, you know, on planet Zorglob, mm -hmm. 
I think that's pertinent to this. Why? Because people already have a habit of lying to themselves. I, I think that's what I'm trying to get at. People yeah. already have a habit of lying to themselves. Like Orthodox Christians already have a habit of lying to themselves. And that may shock mm. people. But it's like... Mm. Yeah. I, I'm just going to throw this out there. I shouldn't, I shouldn't do this. This is probably too deep of a pearl for people. But I guess that's why people are here, right? So, <clears throat> you know... Priests sometimes, I don't know, I, 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 right? Sometimes, like, if I don't, if, if, it's a, if it's a certain situation, sometimes you, you are led to let people kind of, like, keep pulling, keep, like, adding rope, if that makes sense, to hang themselves. You know what I'm saying? Because you may think, right, that the priest doesn't know you're lying, and just because the priest isn't saying, stop lying, that he doesn't know you're lying. But he, I'm just saying everyone should just kind of be aware of this because this is, again, part of the thing is that if you are so sick that you're lying to yourself and sometimes, God forbid, to a priest, um, sometimes in confession, sometimes not, and it, or how about this, or if you think that all this doesn't matter, that this is kind of sensationalism, whatever, talking about this, the you know, deception that's so prevalent and easy to happen now because of deepfakes. I would just say to you, okay, listen, there are people who lie to the priest and lie to, and, they, and they're sick and they're lying to themselves. Those very people, their sickness has brought them to a place they don't have any discernment and they don't have any fear of God. And that fear of God is that, excuse me, that lack of fear of God, that lack of fear of God is precisely where these things are not that far-fetched. To think that a certain narrative comes across, all it takes is for it to catch fire. Like, look, you can, people can quote canons and like history and like all the right people. That doesn't mean that they're living a life of repentance, right? And so the way the, the way that you discern these things is actually having to do it yourself, right? Like that, that's what I'm trying to get at. And this, that's why all this is important. And so I think, I mean, at least for me, that's why I'm still kind of involved. With the project is to just kind of like keep bringing this home because the deception that's coming, it's not, it's not, it's not like, Oh man, God, why'd you let me to get be? Why did you allow me to be tricked? It's like, no, you've consistently pushed away God's, truth the presence that he is the, the pres his presence which is truth and so he's just kind of giving you over to a strong deception and we saw what that looks like in mass in western civilization where we have all the accoutrement we have all the we have everything you need and people again we're not talking about the world we're talking about christians right people found themselves doing and thinking things they would have never thought they would have done or thought or or had been or had thunk the year prior. Is it are you following what I'm saying? So we absolutely we see how quickly everything can turn. And so what I'm saying mm -hmm. is that like this understanding of, you know, like it's the running thread. We talked about this last week, I think, and the week before and the week before that, which is like you've got to learn not to flinch. You've got to learn to kind of like stay in the fire because. The comfortability, it was like you were talking about last week with the guy who gets out of jail. He's like, I'm used to mm -hmm. not sleeping on the floor. Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah, but that's not good. That doesn't mean right. you being uncomfortable in a way that makes you comfortable isn't the thing. Right. Right. That's that's right. That's not what this is. Right. This this is. Well, that's that's actually can be really bad because that would be like a, a somebody who's used to being abused, staying in an abusive relationship. Yes. Right. Yes. Yes. And this is not about that. Like everything. Like when people, if they read Elder Joseph, right? That's not about being abusive for the sake of being abusive, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Which is why it's not for everybody, right? But there is there is this real level, the, the Beatitudes, especially the Beatitudes in the version of Luke, as opposed to in Matthew, where it's you know, like the, the more negative side of it, right? Mm -hmm. That's what we're talking about is like, man, you know, just being really honest about yourself um, because... Some people, 
Like, you got to realize this. This is what I was trying to get out of that nugget. It's like, you know, Sophroni talks about this. Sophroni talks about when he was a confessor in Athos. He's like, yeah, you know, there's times when just a priest shouldn't say anything to someone, even even mm-hmm. if they know it's, it's incorrect because that correction, they're not, they're not a place to hear that correction. So it's just like, okay, you know, you hear their confession, you pray for them, you, and you let them go their way because they're just going through the motions of it. But they don't have any real intention of having, of being exposed. Right, they're just checking mm-hmm. the box for their moral, religious facade that they have, and I, that's a real thing. They so want that, they want the validation, uh, but if the validation doesn't come, they don't want the correction. Yeah, so they'll only take it in the positive. If you're like, "Yep, you're doing the right thing," they're like, or, "Great." Or, then, but if you say you're doing the wrong thing, they can't even hear it. Or just enough of the wrong. They want just enough of the owie. You'd be like, yeah, right. see, it's real. Okay. But like, okay. <laughs> you, do you see what I'm saying? They want mm-hmm. just enough of the inoculation to be like, oh, okay, that was, that was the prick of the, of the needle. Okay, I'm good. But it's like, that reality is, is, is tough because mm-hmm. when you have this whole, you know what it looks like? It looks like, yeah, I love God, love God, trust God, trust God. Hey, man, you need to trust God. It's like, it's like you know, you want to David Goggins people, but it's like, okay, when is it your turn? To have cancer when is it your mm-hmm. turn to lose a mm-hmm. child mm-hmm. when is it your turn to like lose your parent you know what i mean when is it your turn and then where are you are you how quickly do you go to be like thanks god like i thought you loved me god where were you god like that's that is the thing right because people will people bounce for less than a sick child which is one of the worst things you can go through mm-hmm. people bounce for something less than like watching your parent die and waste away from cancer. People bounce because like something got stolen. People bounce because they lost, like they didn't get a job. Like, man, people bounce because they didn't get ordained. Like that happens. Like I was just watching, man, it's funny. There's this guy. I'm pretty sure I know who this guy is. And just whatever the algorithm. Oh, it's just a wonderful piece of, you know, um, soothsaying. Uh, (laughs) This guy popped up. Why I left orthodoxy, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, oh, I think I know this guy. I think this is the same guy who was running around a couple of years ago in Kansas City trying to jump from parish to parish, looking for somebody to co-sign him. Like, he was trying so hard to get ordained. And then, like, I don't think anyone did. And so he finally bounced, right? That's, that's a real thing. That's a guy, right, who kind of got a cat. I mean, I don't know who catechized him, so... Forgive me, whatever. I'm just going to call it for like I see it. I'm open to correction. But that's a guy who got catechized, who kind of like got the the tick tick. Like, yeah, I, I'm going to pass the test. But remember, like I've said, I'm not, I don't catechize people to pass a test. I catechize people to stay in the church, which means you. I, I want you to learn. It. I want you to go through boot camp. I want you to be able to, to like shut up and hear, yeah, that's self-pity. Like that right there. What you're doing is self-pity. So what are you going to do? You're going to leave Christ? You're going to leave the church? Right? Because that's, that's what it takes. That's what it takes. And that's what it takes to also discern this. Because here's the thing. Here's how this plays out. Like, what are you going to do when, you, when, when, when someone rats on you or does whatever? And it's like, hey, Jimmy, you know, the boss calls you in and says, hey, Jimmy, What's this I hear about you talking about homosexuals? What is this? Or trans? Don't, like, this is not our, our policy, whatever. And this is the thing. You shutting your mouth is okay. Hey, man, don't ask, don't tell. That's all good until, until it's not. What are you going to do? What are you going to do when it's like, you know, they come down and they're like, hey, you know, all the stuff, the Mahdi, the Christ, like all the weird delusion and all the weird you know, um, deception comes. I, I think everyone, kind of what Andrew's saying, it's like, you got to stop thinking that you're the guy who's going to pull the sword and, like, defend. Like, you don't know. And, 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 and I wonder, because you maybe are cracking under less pressure. It's like, you know, it's like, a, uh, like I quoted St. Isaac before, St. Isaac the Syrian, he says, if you owe God a small coin, don't presume to give him a pearl, Right? Gave him the small coin first because he won't accept the pearl. So the guy who's like, I'm gonna, I'm down for holy orthodoxy, 
I'm down for this and that. It's like, yeah, man, but what happens if, if, for instance, like, I'll give you a great example. What happens if, for instance, not necessarily the church, because like if you, someone's like, I'll obey as long as it's like an ecumenical council. It's like, no, nah, man, you're going to obey if your priest tells you. Like it, go, it, go, it goes like that. So if your priest tells you, hey, man, like this thing right here, what you're doing is wrong. Like, unless it's mortal sin or unless it's heresy, you, you probably should just do it because that's your test, especially if you don't like it. If you don't like what's being said, but like there's no sin in what's being said, but it's just a sin against your ego, what are you going to do? Like, that's the thing is, if you're not faithful in the small things, you're not going to be faithful in much. If you're not have, if you're having a hard time listening to Pastor Chad or I mean, Father Chad, because whatever, right? Like, you think that you're going to, you know what I mean? It's like, look how many people couldn't even handle what happened four years ago, right? So it's it's only going to be quick. More, they broke real quick. Most it's only going to be more, more subtle, yeah. right? It's well, only fa- Father, there's a this this substitution as versus supplement thing. It's cu- it keeps coming back to me on this note when you were talking about you know somebody who can quote all of these canons and wants to go on and wants to argue about all of these things. And it's again, St. Mary of Egypt, I, the interest of all the things in that in, in her life that stand out to me is when she's talking to Zosimus. St. Zosimus and he realizes that she's quoting scripture. Mm-hmm. And he says, wait, after hearing your story, he's like, you're quoting scripture. Have you studied scripture? And she's like, I've never read it, nor have I ever had it read to me, but the spirit of God, which is alive, teaches a man wisdom. And it's like, oh, oh, so in some ways, it's, it, it's she's almost saying that the scripture is, because it's a description, that the scripture is almost a supplement, or it's like a proof on it, that like, oh, you could have acquired this just by drawing in stream, but again, like you said, the shortcut. Nobody wants to acquire all of the wisdom that's in scripture by going through what St. Mary of Egypt did, right. but that is a path to it. And so there it and then, you know, it completely fired off to me, oh, why it's totally appropriate for Of course you should go off on somebody who comes to catechism but doesn't go to services. Right? Because it's like, well, if you were attending all of the services, and you were seeking to understand what was happening in the services on your own, you would catechize yourself. Mm-hmm. You would not like, even need to come to catechism. Like what's crazy is that I had this conversation with, cause like there's the catechism I have for like the adults. And then I do also catechism for the kids. I said to them at one time, I said like, yeah, I can tell when people are praying or not. And then someone's like, well, how can you tell blah, 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 whatever. Like, yeah, they're kids. God bless them. You know, they're good for my salvation. But like, I don't need, I'm not, I'm not trying to put up like I'm some kind of clairvoyant elder. I'm not saying that at all. It's real simple. You know what I mean? It's, it's real simple. It's kind of like, it's like this. It's as simple as someone comes to me and they're like, I've been lifting, bro. I'm like, "Mm -mm." and I just kind of like, that's right. Hey, how you doing, Mark? You know? Oh, (laughs) (laughs) okay. Okay. That's kind of soft. That's kind of soft. Squeeze the fruits. You just test the fruits. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Mark, can you come over here and can you help the nuns lift this? And Mark's like, oh, he's struggling with the ladder. I'm like, okay, bro, you ain't, you ain't lifting. You know what I mean? And it's the same thing with, with prayer because someone who's actually praying, now, now take in mind, St. Theophan of Clus, somebody can go through the form of prayer. That's the thing. And they're like, no, I am praying. I'm standing in the corner every day with my book and blah, blah, blah. But I'm like, yeah, but where's your mind? You know what I mean? You're running through the prayer so quick. And the whole time you're thinking about what you're going to eat or what you're going to get on and do with, 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 the, with the computer in two hours. You know what I'm saying? That's not prayer. So the thing is, if someone's actually praying, like, I will see the fruit. I'll see it. And, and that's where it, it does become like, hey, you know, you begin, like, if you're actually in prayer, these things begin to make sense and you are being taught by the spirit. And the thing is, is when the priest or your godfather or somebody who you respect says something to you, you're not going to argue with them. And it just like, it makes sense. You move because St. Simeon, the stylite, right? 
the fathers are like, he's in delusion. Okay, we're going to test him. We're going to come to him and say, if you don't come down, blah, 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 whatever. They go to him the next day and they're like, father, come down from there. And he says, may be blessed. And as he starts to come down from the starlight, from the pillar, like, no, 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 never mind. You stay there, right? That's the test. That's the test. It's like, well, if he was in delusion, he would have stayed there and said, no, I'm not coming down. God told me to be here, blah, blah, blah. But he's like, hey, obedience, right? No problem. See, that that's the thing is you don't get that from quite the opposite. You don't get that from reading books and then and then and then and then having your form of prayer, right? To only be like, well, I don't go to services because, you know, Pastor Papu, whatever, he doesn't really know what's going on. It's like, man, it's not even about him. It's not even about him. It's like the services are the services for a reason. And I think that's the thing is orthodoxy isn't something that you can like kind of pick and choose and cherry pick and be like that. That's that's the thing is your orthodoxy just as much about being able to accept God's circumstances in the adverse context as it is knowing something. And, and to be frank, the proof of you knowing something is, are you able to accept your, your adverse circumstances? That's the evidence of whether you're able, yeah. whether you know something or not. Have you internalized it? Yeah. Yeah. You try to curate your experience. That's not, that's not the thing, you know? Yeah. I mean, that, that is when, because I think we've both run into me not in the same level. But like me having to like someone coming to me and asking me a question, me having to poke him a little bit. And I mean, like, I'm not a priest. I'm just saying, like, I mean, yeah, what you did was wrong. Like this thing that you're talking about is wrong. And they're like, ah, this ain't working out. It's not working out. And I'm just like, I don't know. I mean, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, like accepting correction, like I've said before, I'm not, a, I'm not like a particularly like, I'm not. Okay. Sorry, that's what I wanted to talk about. So, Father, you talked about just a second ago rattling off prayers, and you're but at the same time you're thinking about what to have for dinner, what you're going to do on the computer. And so, I don't read the comments a lot, always, but there was somebody who said that he's really struggling with getting to where we are, where we are at, quote unquote. You know, like, and uh, you know what? Do you guys know the comment I'm talking about? It was like from last week or something like that. Stand he, on it. Was that? Expand on it a little bit. Okay, so he said that he's struggling to get that he's like I need think I need to ask for a blessing to listen to this or something. Oh, like that. oh, oh! Because uh, yeah, his comment was something to the effect of, and I think it goes directly because I I commented back. I th I thought it was good because he was like, um, you guys are talking about how people something like you guys are talking about how people should be. And I'm not really getting oh, the practical you... the practical information about how, how to get, get there. And so I think I need to stop listening to the podcast for a while. And my comment back to him was exactly what Father Turbo had said like yeah. three weeks ago. Like, yeah, the, the best situation. And, it, and said again, the best situation that could possibly happen is you turn this off and you go and pray. Yeah. Like, okay. turn it off, go pray. Turn it off. Go to church. Like, yes, so 100 percent. Maybe this is not in the spirit of how this person asked this, because I remember that question being different, but that's OK. But when I wanted to ask Father um, a, a couple of things, but like, OK, so when you're praying, there's a difference between like rattling off prayers and thinking about where you're what you're going to eat for dinner and struggling to not think about what you're going to eat for dinner. Mm -hmm. Right. OK, mm -hmm. so those are two because. I sometimes find myself out of pride beating myself up because I'm really looking forward to those Mexican leftovers in the fridge after I'm done with my prayer. Okay. So God bless you, Andrew. You know, like you're the most valuable person like that. That's a, I'm glad that's a great distinction because I, I know that I can get going and people can interpret things the wrong way. Right. And that's not their fault. That's my fault. Cause I'm, I'm terrible. So yes, I'm not talking about struggling. We all struggle with thoughts kind of trying to come in and distract us from prayer. I'm talking about the person who's self-satisfied in going through the motion of the form of prayer. That's what I'm speaking about, right? 
So that does happen. I've encountered people over the years, right? Uh, and I, first and foremost, was one of them <laughs> who took pride in having a really hefty, long prayer rule. And I was chastised for that, right? So I know what it means to, to really fall into that self-satisfaction and then to lose that. And so I'm, you know, I'll out myself, never mind everyone else. Everyone else is humble. I'm the proud one. I'm just saying from experience that happens where you become self-satisfied in your ability to like, you know what it's a lot like? Because this also happened to me in my natural life. I'm just going to out myself, hopefully a bunch of stuff today and God's, you know, will have mercy on me. There is a point in time, I was just thinking about this today. There's a point in time, my wife was commenting on this, when I was in really good shape, like really good shape. And I was training and I could fight and I could do all that stuff, right? And there was, there was moments in that when I would just be aware of my body in the wrong way. I was aware of what I could do. Does that make sense, right? And, and that self-awareness, in many ways, looking back on it, became the, 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 the beginning seeds of complacency. Does mm-hmm. that make sense at all, what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Very much so. So that's exactly what I'm talking about. I'm talking about, this is why when the Father say, don't let your, don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. Right? That's why you don't ever want a progress report. You don't go to your priest, you know what I mean? Hey, how am I doing? Looking for the pat on the back. You go to the priest saying, how, hey, how am I doing? For the priest to tell you like, yeah, okay, great. But blah, 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 blah. Why? Because the like, the, the feeling yourself, as I used to say, right? That kind of letting your left hand know your right hand is doing, that's the first step to like, right? And that, that's why too, let's talk about prelist really quick. You don't need to be like St. Nasitas. You don't need to be walking on the edge of the cliff, having like the false mother of God calling you about to jump. Like there's a whole bunch of steps long before you get there, right? It's, it's you know, you're telling people how long your prayer rule is and you're feeling whatever, blah, blah, blah. It's like, yeah, you have this great prayer rule, whatever, but you're still a jerk. Hmm. Seriously. You know what I mean? Yes. You, have this, you have this super long, great prayer rule, right? But like... You can't do what your what your husband tells you. You can't do what your wife tells you. You can't stand someone saying something. Right? That's a sign. That's a sign. Right? If you have a beefy prayer rule, but you are still spending your days in irritation, something's wrong. Right? That that's that's what I mean. But if you're praying and you're like, man, this is, oh, you know, it's just like, it's a struggle because I'm, I'm just constantly assaulted with my prayers. Well, then, or assaulted in my prayers with these other thoughts. Let me tell you something. Here's what you do. You talk to your priest first and foremost, and then whatever your priest tells you, you do it, right? But let me give you a little supplement vitamin. <laughs> <laughs> like, here is, here is the surefire way to know if you prayed or not. Right. Full disclaimer, you don't necessarily need to get this every time, but this should be kind of running in the background. Pain of heart. Right. Like, here's this is why this is the admission fee for watching this. Right. This is the admission fee for going through, you know, 20 minutes of rattling on about, you know, Captain America or about like punk rock. Right. This is this is because here's the here's that little nugget that you probably are, are searching for, pain of heart, right? If you pray, and you get pain of heart over how much of a jerk you were, right? Your irritability, you're still looking at porn, um, you know, um, you whatever, you know what I mean? Pain of heart over. Your, your cousin who you really love and it's like they're caught in a real bad lifestyle and they're dying, you know what I mean? And you have real pain of heart for them, not self-pity, pain of heart. You, you've prayed. You've prayed. And those of you who know, you'll know what I'm talking about. You'll pray for 20 minutes and get three minutes of pain of heart. 
that's that's kind of like the dividends, you know what I'm saying? So it's like that's how you know if you've prayed, right? But you coming back feeling self-satisfied, that's that's generally probably like a little little warning sign, you know? Yeah. I think Father Cosmo said that the spiritual life, it looks like people just got out of a washing machine. Like they're just like all beat up. Like they're just like they just looks like they just got thrown about. Um, and then yes, absolutely. That's 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 the answer because like I think that that's I think that's something that as just a regular lay person, I think I forget I should I'm like I should be feeling I should be experiencing something when I'm praying I should be feeling something it's like Father, hey, forgive me Andrew I love you I just I want to interrupt you because what you're saying is so good not because I just it's so good because I, I just want to say this to people. There's people who will flip out too, and they're like, "I'm, you know, I'm not feeling anything." But even even so, I just want to say this: there's a thing where people don't like the uncomfortability that is built into orthodoxy. I just want to throw this out there. So some people be like, "Yeah, but I'm, you know, it's like I'm praying, but I'm not really getting anything." And it's like a lot of times you're not getting something because you're looking for the wrong thing. You want prayer to pre pre to produce the results that you got when you were doing mindfulness <laughs> exercises. You mm. know what I'm saying? You and that's not it. Like, okay, let me give you another nugget, everybody. The Jesus prayer is not a relaxation technique. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> okay, so let's just let's just be really clear, right? So that and and that's the thing is like, it's not a relaxation technique. Yeah, can you get peace? Yeah, but the peace I give to you is not the peace that the world gives that I give it, right? So, like, there's a tension. There's a tension that comes. And, like, here, here's the thing, right? This is an absolute statement. Is there a place for, you know, we talked about this last week. We talked about, yeah, you know, being thankful for what God's given you is not the same as, like, having, what, having those things become your comfort, Right, St. Paisios, you seek the comfort of men, you will not receive the comfort of God. Right? Super important, right? So, like, yes, we were talking about this last week and we're talking about it every week. Asceticism is baked in. Yes, denying yourself is baked in. Yes, there is no apprehension of orthodoxy without the cross, without this. There just isn't. Because guess what happens? The person who wants to have an orthodoxy that just makes it okay for them to fill in that thing that they don't want, that they know they shouldn't, but they want to like find a way to justify it. That is called an idol. And it's also the thing that leads to like heresies, like Kiliasm. That's why people end up looking for utopia because they want to have something that's like, yeah, you know, well, I know the church says about this and that, whatever, but it's like, yeah, I want to be able to be wealthy and not give money and not really like sacrifice and still be okay. But check this out. I'm going to say it super clear, right? The fathers are clear on it. The gospels are clear on it. Is money a problem? Yes, it is. Right? If, if, if you have been given wealth and you are not striving to become a philanthropist, it is a problem. Full stop. Absolute. That's not, I'll stand by that. That is not my opinion per se. That's, that's everything I've ever read. And the fathers, and also too, being someone who's wealthy, meaning I live in America and I know I'm wealthy, <laughs> right? Um, you have to find those outlets. I don't know what that is. That's between you and the priest, but like, you have to find those out outlets of philanthropy. Why? Because that's how we're saved. And if you have a narrative that you can have everything here and there the devil's lied to you, right? That's why all that stuff is connected. Well, and also philanthropy is, I mean, this is what, what you're saying, Father, is just like, you're just describing so much of my, my, my recent life is, you know, the thing about philanthropy is that philanthropy is like, wealth doesn't solve the problem of philanthropy. It's the one, it's the one problem that wealth doesn't solve. Because you you can always have given better in one way or another. You could have always, every dollar could have had more impact than it did. 
And so that the, if you if you are striving to be philanthropic, you're constantly striving for like to put yourself in more and more discomfort because you could have constantly been better. And to the point that to the things that you're saying and and it's interesting because at the time in my life when I was on TV, not a care in the world, more money that I could spend, as I've said before, like that was the worst time for me. And it's and I and it but it helped to inform me now because I will catch myself of being like, it's because there are times. And when you said like, it'll lead to complacency. Oh yes. There are times when I'll look and I'll say, Oh, wow. Look at all the things that I've done. I've done this, 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 this. And especially when people will like see the things that I've done, this is always a trap. And I try to like, ah, 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 ah stop, stop, stop. People will see the things that I've done and they'll be like, Whoa, that's genuinely. Like, whoa, that's amazing. Like software projects that I'm doing or whatever, they'll get to play around. Oh, that's incredible, whatever. And I'm like, ah, oh, stop. Because if I listen to that, the next week, I won't work. I won't work. Can I say something? And I, will, and I will slack off on all kinds of things. And it's only when I'm like, man, you ain't done nothing. And that's what it's been recently for me is it's like, yo, you're not experiencing you're you're not doing anything. Why why are you why are you waking up at 5 30 instead of 4 30? That's the like best you could be getting in an extra half hour of prayer. And then you and then you could be making the kids breakfast more often. Yeah. Like and then you could be at, then you could be grinding away at work at 7 a.m. instead of at nine. Yeah. There's two you things. know I, I really I just go ahead, I guess. Please. One of them is there's this part from that Athos documentary. Uh it's just the one that follows like the four monks around. Uh, it's the People's Republicers, and I can't remember like New Republic documentary. <laughs> okay. like that it's okay. really, really good. It's a fantastic documentary. Um, it's on YouTube. It's free. But there's a part where a monk is like, um, he's like, and he's kind of like, he's the monk I struggle with because he's mm. kind of not very nice the entire time. Mm. <laughs> they follow like three of them around specifically, and one of them is this guy that I just I love. He's just this like kindly old man, and he serves the the film crew like schnapps with like a little piece of cake and then like some coffee. And he's like, the cake is for this and the coffee's for telling stories and the schnapps is to bring your spirit. And he's like this wonderful kindly. And that's the guy I really like. But then there's this kind of like old guy and he like drives trucks around on Athos and stuff. Like he's like a monk and stuff, but, but he's, and he's gruff with everyone. He's like watching people pick olives. And he's like, I want to see you guys work. Like he's like doing stuff like that. <laughs> well, there's a part where he's, and he's still kind of being rude to this guy that's helping him. I don't know what the proper term is, but he's like de-shelling shrimp or something. He's taking like the, sh the, shell. In the kitchen. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's a little bit before that. Cause he's sitting at a table yeah. and then he tells a guy, um, he's like, he's like, no, tell them to go put the mag in the oven or something like that. He's like, no, sit down first and do it. And then like the guy sits down and there's like a part where he sits back and you can see it for like a second. And he's like, Lord, I am a sinner. And it's just like, man, it's like for that five seconds, like you see it. He's just like, man, I am a sinner. And it's just like, man, how much does like, even if like, even if it's quote unquote wrong to be gruff, whatever, if he's sincerely repentance, no one is feeling that more than him. He's mm -hmm. feeling that he's feeling the gruffness. Mm -hmm. He's feeling like how much that weighs on him. And then to what you just said, I don't want to give this person a big head. Uh, but it's a person that um, everyone who goes to St. Mary's is very familiar with. And I want to give them a big head. So I won't even gender them, whatever. But like they were talking. Yeah, they were talking. And they're in a position where they get probably a, a, quite a few compliments. And um, they were talking to my wife and, um, you know, somebody was, she, you know, they were talking and they um, said, oh, you know, blah, 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 you know, just wonderful, you know, love, blah, 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 blah. And they're like, yeah, that's what the demons tell me too. Mm. Like, mm, mm, mm. Mm. Tasty snack. Like, 1,000%. Mm. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And it's Kudos like, to whoever said that, man. Yeah. Yeah. I and get... like, and I, that's an excellent way to shut yeah. someone down. That's so good. To, like, man, I just, you know. Well, it's not about <laughs> shutting them down, right? It's about. It's protecting about, yourself yeah it's about you know how do you how do you navigate how do you navigate compliments you know you have to go under them or over them and that that was like really good that's a good one you know yeah i just want to say this too because i just want to like i know i just throw stuff out i'm trying to be better at that like 
there's all kinds of ways of philanthropy. You know, it isn't just the dude on the corner on the side of the freeway. You can be like study if if you're in a position where you got where you got funds. Look, study study the lives of the saints. There's so many Saint Philaret, but also there's King David of of uh, Georgia. Like there's these build help build churches, help build orphanages. You know what I mean? Send someone to seminary, right? It's like, I'm not saying that you need to be whatever. And I'm like, I'm not saying that God, you know, there's, God's not, hey, enjoy those vittles, man. I'm glad you enjoyed that Cordon Bleu and that white wine with a nice salad, you know, maybe an omelet on the side. I don't know. Like, that's not the problem. The problem is if you trust in your riches, the problem is that, you know what I mean? That's that's what I'm trying to get at. Is like, we've talked about this before, right? There's incredibly generous people with their wealth. I know them. I know people who are very wealthy and they're very generous. They're philanthropists, right? And I know some broke people who are so materialistic and stingy and whatever, and their poverty does them nothing. It just adds on to their suffering. So... Being poor in of itself is not virtuous and having money does not mean that you're damned. That's not mm-hmm. what I'm saying at all. It's about what is your disposition, right? How are you? Because I've known poor people who they embrace that cross and it's just like, oof, Christ is with them. You know what I'm saying? So it just, it, it depends on what you do with it. And how do you know what to do with it? That's, this is the whole point. Where's the cross? It's that simple, Right. You need a priest, you need a godfather, you need, you know, those people in your life to help you just make sure you're not just justifying yourself. But that's that's the, that's how you solve the riddle, right? Where is the cross, right? Where is the cross? Pick up the way the SEDEX, read it. It'll be really helpful to you. A couple of things I want to throw out there real quick. Kind of what Cyprian was saying, people may be like, what the heck are you talking about? That's when the that's like the par Schindler's list. I like for me, that's the whole point of watching Schindler's list. You know what I'm talking about? When he's like, I could have saved more. I could have. Mm. Like that right there. That That's kind of a, what you were talking about, Cyprian. That whole that whole thing. It's like, I could have saved more. I could have done more. Like, oof. Like that, like that's, that's a really, really key point. And I think that's where the spirit of Goggins can become, you know, kind of redemptive. Right? Because it's not about you know, being hard on yourself just for the sake of being hard on yourself. It's about like being hard on yourself because you realized or you realized where you are not fulfilling the commandment of love. That's what it is. Because Goggins is just about being harder, faster, better, stronger. God bless him, you know, whatever. Don't don't send him my way. But <laughs> like the real thing we're trying to get at is, and again, the asceticism of the church isn't being harder, faster, and being like the mean old guy. It's about like not offending love, you know? Yeah. Well, it's, it's also, I, I, there's, so there's this principle. I think it's, it's easy with weightlifting. It's easy because it's, it's simple and not complex, but there's this principle about, uh, you should always have the same amount of, let's say, let's call it discomfort or suffering exertion, right? You should all, and you should be the same degree of like sore, Two days after a workout, after you've been in the gym for 20 years and are jacked as you had the first day. And the difference is not that the suffering changes. You're going to the, the suffering that you experienced on day one, you're going to experience that on day 10,001. The difference is that if you will do that, that what you look like at the end, because what happens is the suffering doesn't change, but you change. Mm-hmm. You become stronger. You become faster because now when you exert the same amount of what the the same amount of suffering, when you'll put yourself through the same amount of suffering that you did on day one, that you do on day 10,001, oh, what, what the fruits of that is, the amount that you can lift at that point for that suffering is like incredible. And I think that this is what I've been going through. Like this has been when I said the last couple of months, like the spiritual aspect is that I did find myself maybe maybe five months ago there was this period where I I had would occasionally find myself looking and being like in all the things in my life kind of like look how far you've come you know Mm -hmm. that every once in a while 
it would be like, man, look at how, look at how far you've come, like judging myself against myself, you know? And it's like, eh, yeah, that's, that's, but really it's like, yes, look at how far you've come, maybe, but when I find that, when I find that things are right and I'm in order, it's when I am, because now obviously, mm -hmm. Yeah, that I can do spiritually than I could at that time. But it's like, well, why aren't you going deeper? Then go deep. I guess that's basically what it is. It's like, oh, you could hold your breath to 10 meters where you could only hold it to eight before. Do why are you happy about that? You could hold it to 10 meters. Go deeper. Go to 12. Like now you could hold it at 12. Go deeper. Go to 14. Don't. What's, why are you even thinking about two meters? <laughs> what's that? <laughs> you know? I, I think... I th I don't in, in regards to salvation it was like um or the work that's required of it orthodox um is that there's a someone said like so you've started to like cooperate with someone helping you like pull yourself out of the gigantic pit you've made for yourself like what benefit like so what is to be proud of that like how why are you proud of that like exactly. you finally decided to just stop slopping around in the slop and the hand that's been whole, extended to you for 25 years you finally decided to like turn around and like just start to maybe comprehend like maybe i should actually start thinking about doing this and not like rolling around in my own excrement and like <laughs> bodily fluids or whatever and like like so what so it's like oh i'm a really good person because i'm doing this it's okay i guess it's like again yeah, you're doing such a great job rowing. Wow, you're great. But also, like, so what? You could row by yourself in the middle of the ocean. You'd be dead in 10 seconds, you know? Like, so it's the ship that's saving you. It's always going to be the ship that's saving you. So, well, and, you know, it, it's funny because I just want to say this, too. It's like, uh I realize, again, so I just want to help someone out. They've gotten this far. I realize that there are people that are in real difficult situations. You know what I mean? So let's just be clear. Like, I, I understand that there are difficult situations. But, you know, like, I just, I've known too many people, Cyprians being one of them. But, like, even, you know, I know some good people in Alaska, Arjun and Katie. You know, like, you know, they got no priest where they're at and everything. And like, you know, we talk and, you know, shout out to them. And like, that's just an example. It's like, okay, you know, we connect, we talk, whatever, but it's like, it gave them a path towards something and they're putting in the effort to do what they can. Right. They can't be at services all the time because it's a matter of distance that happens to people. I, I get that. Like the thing is, is are you willing to do what you can do? You, you know what I'm saying? Are, are you willing to do what you can do? And that's part of the difference. That's why this isn't just about like, what this is about is, is really giving thanks to God. And it's like, okay, you're in a place where like, there's no Orthodox church near you. And it's like real tough. Okay, well then if you're listening to this, obviously God's giving you something. So what I'm telling you is you need to take that next step to where even if you only get to liturgy once every month, once every couple of months, that's what you need to do. If you need to start doing typica or doing whatever every week, then that's what you need to do. But you need to do something that's allowing you to, to, to be connected because the connection is the thing. The supplement, the vitamin that we're giving here, I'm not, I won't be cheeky anymore. The vitamin is, is there to help you to kind of like be aware of that. So like, you know, there's my PSA, like why the, the last whatever half hour has been worth it to be able to say to someone like, look, God knows your circumstance. Just don't complain. Mm -hmm. Don't feel sorry for yourself. Pray and God will make a way for you. Not in the way that you want it to be. Not in the way that you, you know, is going to make you feel super and special. But he'll make a way for you because he desires that all would be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth that the scripture says which means he'll make a way for you to start working out your salvation. You know, mm -hmm. I've had people say to me, it's like, no, like what's all this stuff? You know, it's like, but God doesn't keep anybody from the church that any, anyone who's had that thought, like 
why is God not letting me in? Is that if, if you've had that thought, you are in delusion and you are listening to the demons, right? God will it's make so a- the, it's father. It's so the opposite. It's so miraculously the opposite to where you're like, what? And I mean, your circumstances have little to do with it because St. John Chrysostom talks about exactly. the Ninevites versus the Israelites. Exactly. Like who accepted, who actually repented, like the Ninevites, mm-hmm. like and Israelites had everything. They had mm-hmm. everything mm-hmm. they could possibly they could possibly desire in the well, old said. covenant. And then Saint and Mom Saint John Chrysostom, and he's just like, and he's like, but then look at the Ninevites; they get one prophet, and they repent. Like they mm-hmm. repent so much so that God spares them the destruction. And you know, and then because, they get on their laurels, and then they lose it again. And I and I, it was just it's so funny because it's one of the things we've been talking about in regards of. Which I don't know if I'm gonna have the can of worms just for time wise, but I want to anyways. Is like you know, we've been having this kind of ongoing thing about Western and Eastern this this and that. And like I just want to put out a couple things there. Like number one, it, it like I don't want people to misinterpret the thought that like just by proxy of the West everything is like not good and bad, whatever. That's that's not what's being said here. However, there is a certain you know kind of disposition that's been not just inculcated, but, but, you know, incarnated in the Eastern mindset. Right. And it's, it's manifest in liturgy, the way that the ascetical life plays out in the Orthodox tradition, like it's all that. Right. The reason why I'm saying that is because one of the key things there is like, what is the approach towards God? Because the approach towards God in the West that we experience, like us talking about as Westerners is why is God punishing me? This thing that happened that I don't like, why is God punishing me? Right. Whereas typically the Eastern mindset, quote unquote, I'm talking about like, you know, Serbians, uh, Macedonians, Romanians, Russians that I've met, even if they're just kind of like whatever, quote unquote, nominal grade or whatever, they still will have more of a disposition of like not blaming God for something. That's kind of the thing that I'm talking about in regards of like, what's your orientation? Do you, do you justify God or do you justify yourself? Because, because Westerners typically try to justify themselves. Oh, God didn't open up things to, for me exactly the way I wanted them to be. The priest didn't welcome me in like a, like a hero and a saint. So why does God not want me to be in the church? You know what I mean? Uh, you know, my car got stolen, whatever. I, that's a sign God doesn't want me in the church. Like, oh, I got sick, whatever. So God hates me. You know, he's mad that I didn't say my prayer roll the right way. He made me sick. It's like, that's not that's not an orientation that someone should have towards God, right? You don't you don't take these things and be like, oh yeah, God, whatever. You don't justify yourself; you justify God. God always loves you. God always loves everybody, right? Even in hell, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like 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 that's the problem. And I just I want to bring that up because the reality of how this wrong orientation towards God opens up for us in the West, so many temptations, including, you know, I I think you can find yourself kind of, um, shall we say, spiking the algorithm, right? And asking certain questions or looking up certain things. And the next thing you know, in your YouTube feed, whatever, you're getting stuff that's going to give you the wrong impression. It's kind of like, I just want to say this to kind of get my point across. We all know this, the person who's like, you know, you're, like someone who had their mom or their, or, or maybe you're a wife and your husband's interested in orthodoxy or maybe your husband and you're interested in orthodoxy, but your wife is one. And so the, what they do is they go like, why is orthodoxy a cult? And they go and they type that in and it's like, yes, yeah, see, I get all the, I get all the, I get all the Jason Kirkpatrick's and all the yahoos and all the Lofton, Michael, Jimmy jams who like, want to talk about how orthodoxy is and blah, blah, blah. Well, it's like, of course, because you loaded it that way. Yeah. Right? I know we've talked about this before, but I'm just, I'm saying this because that orientation of do you justify yourself or, you, or do you justify God, that plays out in ways that are not just kind of like mystical, but they play out in practical ways in which you just basically kind of sabotage the whole thing. You know, just by you typing in something in Google, that's, that's very practical like that, you know? Well, and forgive me, Father, because... I think this dr- goes back full circle to what the real danger that we're approaching with the deep fakes is, because I've no- I've I've noticed this also. And it's almost like 
the saturation of this, um, and I don't know how many other people have even realized that this is happening, but there's so much in terms of like news, news stuff, but also I think some relatively like kind of historical stuff where I've noticed that like the voices that are reading, they sound like human voices, but they're AI, right? Yeah. Like, I don't, I don't know how many people have, oh, yeah. have caught like on to rock. this. Like there's the a rock few, ad. Yeah, there's a few. I don't know. Few... The government is giving you this money. When, <laughs> frankly, you're an idiot if you're not getting it. The government owes you $6,400. Right. These, these, really, these yeah. sorts of things. But there's a bunch of them. And it's like, oh, is this coming from Western intelligence? Is this coming from the Chinese? Is this coming from the Russians? Because obviously it doesn't have a Chinese accent. So it's like it could be from anybody. <laughs> but I think that this is the real the the real threat is that there are people who want to justify themselves mm -hmm. and the demons the the powers that be know that they're going to justify themselves by saying why is orthodoxy a cult and so they're going to have something ready for you yeah they're going to have something that may even look like it's a monk or a priest who has left the church but isn't that monk or priest never existed but mm -hmm. how would you know and they're going to say that they were on mount athos and they did all this but i then i found out it was a cult and you know what if you go looking for it to justify yourself the age that we're entering into is you're going to find that justification and it's going to be so convincing to you yeah because you want it you're already primed for it you you not only do you want it you'll pay for it mm-hmm <laughs> You'll actually pay for it. People can actually make a living by feeding you stuff to where you can trick yourself, like you said, to, to allow you to lie to yourself more effectively. I mean, yeah, I mean, the Daily Wire. I mean, I'm just saying oh, like, bro, already, like, that's, it's already there. Yeah, it's perfect. already there. <laughs> perfect. Yeah. And, I mean... and, and it's one thing if it's it's one thing if you have to keep going out and finding human beings to do it. But when you can create it at scale in mass in any language, yeah, yeah, <sighs> yeah, it's it. I mean, it's a wrap, and that's why. Look, the liturgy is analog. You know, the liturgy is analog. Not as analog as it gets. It's, and yeah, and yeah. that's why, you know, like for for all that we do here which is awesome i love it i'm grateful i'm i'm super glad that people i'm still glad that what we're doing is bearing fruit mm -hmm. the biggest fruit's going to be like everybody like go to services more like i like right here's the thing go to services more right read the scriptures and the commentaries right for your edification not for arguments not for mm -hmm. debates but for right learn to embrace the cross because that's that's the test. Are you hearing no in the right yeah. way? Good. Yeah. Keep hearing no. That's how that's how you're going to discern, right? Participate in the sacrament, right? Be obedient, right? Learn to be a human being, right? Mm. Find people, love them. Love the people that have found you. Be mm. be in love, you know what I'm saying? Like Expect temptations. Don't look for a cushy situation that's going to affirm every opinion that you have. It's not about your opinions. Who cares? You know what I mean? Temptations, they're the shadow of grace. Like, grace comes, you're going to get temptations. Like, you need to learn to love that. You need to learn to embrace that. You need to learn that when things go wrong, that you don't just every every time something goes wrong, you question whether you should be a Christian or Orthodox. If you're doing that, something's wrong, mm -hmm. right? So the quickest way out of that is by getting you know getting into the incarnational space, right? If you can't be at services, then you need to find someone. You need to find some resources that you're going to teach you how to say the prayers and how to get it get into a community, right? But you need to have some measure of community. Like it's just it's got to be incarnate. I don't know what else to say. Right? It has to be incarnate. That's the, it has to be. It has to yeah. be. And that's the well, the in, it, the incarnate aspect is clearly like it's self evident that that is the inoculation against what's coming, because all of what's coming, every all of the the threat is disincarnate. Clearly, clearly, like clearly, the threat is disincarnate, or or it's not even disincarnate. It's like fake 
incarnate. Yeah. Because it's it's faking the flesh, right? Mm-hmm. Like that's the whole thing with the guy who's like, oh, this avatar speaking. Because it's it it looks, it appears to be the flesh. It sounds as though it is the flesh, yeah, you know but it's funny? not the flesh. It's kind of funny. We talk about it a little bit here and there, but I just want to just kind of go real hard in on it just for like one minute. Less than one minute, 20 seconds. I just <laughs> want to say, isn't that one of the big setups with porn? Oh, yes. 100%. You know what I'm saying? Like, isn't that 100%. one of the big setups besides like the lust and the depravity mm-hmm. of self abuse that that's there? Mm-hmm. Isn't that one of the big setups though to really the, the, the faking of flesh? I mean, mm-hmm. and, and getting people just okay with that. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, well, no, as, like so, as someone who was a reality TV star father, I'll take it a step further. Because I think that it's part of this part of the same thing, and reality TV, I think, has done probably. It's hard to say that something could have done more damage than porn, but I think reality TV is part of the same uh, damaging uh, uh, deception. You know, mm-hmm. it, the, it's called reality TV, and the idea is like, oh, it's unscripted, and it's it's representing something that happened in the real world. It's mm-hmm. representing incarnate reality. Mm-hmm. In a way that a scripted television show, oh, this Three's Company was shot in front of a studio audience. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. No, 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 no. This happened in the real world. We captured the real thing that happened. And it's like, nope, nope. It's but it, but there's an art form to making it appear as such. Mm-hmm. Like a great reality show, one that is very good at that deception, like the one that I was on, which had like the top talent working on it. It's shocking how good. To the point where even me, who was the person who was there looking at it, and some of my co-stars I know, they they watch the show. And again, like we were talking about pseudo memory, they would talk about the things that happened on the show. Like, the, And I was like, no, dude, I was there. Mm-hmm. Like we did five takes of that. Mm. It wasn't like that. They mashed that together. Nobody said that. They did what they call Frankenbiting, where they took little. So it's like the it's like the precursor. It's almost like we've been on this ride. You know what I mean? Like reality TV was already the precursor of that thing that we just watched of the of the guy with the avatar. Mm. It's just they had to use real humans to do it. They couldn't fully automate it. It was like the assembly line's been there, but it's been Mm. humans on the assembly line. Mm. And now we've removed the humans from the assembly line. And it's like it's it's all it's Mm. all machines. And I feel like. I mean. Reality TV is produced the same and, and for the same reasons that porn is produced. And it's no surprise that the top reality TV shows have pornographic aspects to the Kardashians, mm-hmm. Real Housewives, mm-hmm. right? I mean, the Real Housewives may as well, well be ex-porn stars, the mm-hmm. way that they look. Mm-hmm. Same goes for the Kardashians, mm-hmm. right? Same goes for Survivor, where, where they're mostly naked. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. this is so it's people a... shouldn't be surprised and people are primed. So it's like if you've been watching reality TV, oh, they got they got you. There's a guy they got the... you now, which is what was what Andrew. There, there's a guy on YouTube um, and he he he's funny. Uh, he's a political commentator. I don't know if I should shout him out because I don't know if I really want like people to go out and pursue him or whatever but one of the things that he said one of the uh, videos that he released was 2023 wasn't real and i was just like it yeah no it wasn't it was so like and nothing about that nothing in that year at least at least the way that i, I see things and like I, I tell most people when i start you know um railing on about you know when i get done doing the alex jones rant with the they're called demons people they're demons and they're here from another you know it's like they're not aliens they're here and they've been operating it's like after i get done with that i always tell people like look at the end of the day if i make it to heaven and i ask god like hey was any of that stuff real and he says no i'm like okay i was wrong i'm sorry i I don't know i don't know i mean like that's just kind of my disclaimers like well i don't but but allow me to finish this i know it's real but the thing is is like um so much of that the way i see it is just it wasn't organic like nothing about it was organic it was so scripted everything you're talking about 2023 
2023 was 100%. so scripted. It was so like, no, this happened. So this happens. And it's all like, it, you, you just see like the wave of influencer effect, whatever. Yeah. That's, that's all I wanted to say is just like, speaking of like creating a reality for people. That see, ah, them. Man, Andrew, you earned your keep today, man. Like super good. Like playbook underhand pitch. I because th I think maybe I could be wrong. I think that there's some people who think they understand the principalities and powers things, Ephesians 6. They still don't really understand it. They still don't really understand it, right? And I'm shocked actually at how few really get this. Uh, and I'm speaking kind of like on the clergy level because let's just can we be full bold? And I'm hoping. I'm inviting audience participation on this. This is a weird episode, like fourth wall being broken all the time. Like if there's other people out there, like if someone's like, no, father, so-and-so, please send it my way. I'm really curious because I only know of a couple people, uh, you know, we're one of them. The Lord of Spirits gets into this a little bit too, obviously. Um, Pajo will kind of like hit on it, but it's like everyone's kind of like got a little bit a different thing. You know what I mean? on it and that this gets into a whole nother topic but it's just it's shocking to me how few, how how little it's talked about in the in at least in the english speaking church and if nothing else not in speaking of justifying yourself i think maybe in some reason in some regards that's why we why we kind of why i feel we still need to do this at least for now because it's still really not talked about and on top of that I mean, we're not, we are the smallest of small, I mean, we're nothing, you know what I mean? Like we get maybe like maybe 200 people watch us. So who cares? Whatever. But, small but scrappy, you know, small but scrappy, but here, here's the thing I want to get at. Right. So I just want to touch on this before, before whatever happens. Uh, so that thing with brother Augustine, that, ta that, that X thing. Uh, you right? want me to, I, I have it. You want, you want me to show yeah, yeah, it yeah, so people know what you're up. talking about? Pull it up. Uh, this one here. Let me. I'll make it smaller. Can you see? Can you guys see it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I can see it. The the yeah. Okay. Is it good or bad? Do you want it's me to? Good. I it's can... good. It's good. It's good. So just just for the context, right? So, um was speaking with with brother augustine my good cough right um and he's like hey can you weigh in on this whatever blah, blah blah and we talk whatever so long story short he's in this kind of like uh debate argument with this mormon guy and he's like yeah i know i shouldn't have done it whatever you know full disclaimer but he's going back and forth you know like bad doctrine all this stuff and he says like hey you know i threw this out which is like Latin, get behind me, Satan, right? Yes. And then he's like, the weirdest thing is this guy shot this back. And he's like, I don't know. And and see, I just want to use him it's as deep. a case. It's so deep. It's so deep. What I, I that wanna, guy sent back is so deep. Yeah. I want to use this and I want to use Brother Augustine Michael Whitcock as a case study of like what you should do. Like he mm -hmm. did everything right. So in other words, He's getting in an argument on Twitter, on X, excuse me, and he knows he shouldn't, and he acknowledges it. Ding, ding, ding. He did the right thing right there, right? Mm -hmm. He had this encounter, and he's like, look, I, I was just going back and forth this guy, and he's like, I threw this out in the Latin. And then he's like, I don't know if I'm just tripping or whatever it is, but it felt like it wasn't that guy. Like, the you don't yep. have the authority just came out, and then yep. he's like, because then right after that, it was like back to the normal Mormon guy. And so he and so he was like, Father, I just want to like, can't, like, what's your thought on this? And so he gets another stripe for another check for doing the right thing. Because he went to someone. He said, can you check this? Am I being mm -hmm. crazy? Am I in delusion? Am I being sensational? Right? So he did everything right. And then I was like, nope, you're not crazy. That this is exactly... It is what it is as you see it, right? So this is the thing. People don't understand. It's like we've talked about this so many times. Like, yes, okay, we are using the same medium, right? 
But also at the same time, I'm not saying like, hey, be a Luddite, do whatever. But like the reality is, is you got to discern because people don't understand what all of this is. They don't, mm -hmm. un they don't understand how the fallen ones work. And the fact that, man, we can spend another episode just talking about this, right? Because guess what? He doesn't have the authority. And that's what I was about to say. That's the, yeah. that's the, that's yeah. the, well, father, what I found so interesting about this. You know, this is capital A, by the way. Oh yeah. So this is, mm -hmm. this is the response that things snarled back at him. Yeah. Well, and, well, and but, like... but, but, but the, the thing is right. So can I, can I, father, do you mind for, forgive me? I want to give like, what's, what stuck out to me on this is. So, so this Vade retro Satana, that's, it's what's interesting about that is that's not actually the statement that Christ makes in the gospel multiple times in Latin. He actually got it wrong, but in a actually, way he got no, it right. But what that's from though is the Benedict exercise. Yes. Yes. But, but the that's Benedict... what I thought was so interesting. Right. It's, that's so that, Latin. <laughs> right. And so the thing is, is right. But, but here's the thing. And that, that gets us into a whole other thing too, because you know, like, I, I don't want to, like, let's just put it this way. We can have a whole other thing about this. The Benedict, the, the, the Benedict, right? The, the, the metal is legit. Okay. And that, that's the thing of, that's why I was kind of saying earlier about the West, like people, if, if you think that I'm sitting here and as much as I rail on about the West where I'm just like, no, just by proxy, it's wrong. No, 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 no. I'm not saying that at all. Because listen, if you want to break down, like, What's really but, crazy. but father, forgive me, but it's right on the met. Like if he was wearing the metal, that's one thing. But if he's it, but if he's expressing it as though it, it's coming yes. from him, that's different, right? That's right. different. And so, and so here's another reason why there's a thing is because I was even telling him, even this is a blessing because this is opening up a whole other thing for him, which is going to be personal between him and I, right. but it's like, even in this kind of snap, this like every t listen, th this is getting back to what I was saying about do you justify yourself or justify God? Mm -hmm. I was explaining this to someone. This is man, it's just everyone's. This is crazy. Like I was talking with someone today, and if you hear this, you know who I, you know who you, who you are. So shout out to you. And we were talking about like the like two classes of people. Consistently, mm -hmm. you see a weird demonic spirit come through them. Uh, people caught up in the alphabet soup cult. Oh yeah, yeah. and Mormons. Yeah, mm -hmm. consistently have like manifest just like a, it's like really evident. And what's what's interesting is right that conversation I had on that was completely separate from my discussion with Brother Augustine, mm -hmm. sure. right? And it's like because this person he's talking with is a Mormon, right? And so right. the thing is, is certain certain things, certain practices, certain doctrines will open you up mm -hmm. to being a portal possession, whatever you want to say, there's a whole distinction there, but I'm just saying for the shorthand right now, than others, right? Mormonism being one of them. And that's a whole nother thing. Now, that being said, I also want to kind of like go down on this because we can talk about this whole thing here. It's like, man, number one, the fact that, and someone, and, and if you, if you're like, that's just a coincidence, blah, blah, blah. If that's if you're not hearing what we're saying about this, mm -hmm. about the fall ones using this and, and, and this interaction being what it is, mm -hmm. you need to go back to school and that you're you are the person we're trying to warn to like wake up, mm -hmm. understand how this works. It isn't just about the deception of like deep fakes. Right. This is going to be hard, but I'm just going to say it. It isn't just AI, guys. It's like to some degree to a greater degree than people like, right? I'm touching my laptop right now as I speak. This is kind of like a Ouija board. It's a portal for sure. There's it's no doubt portal. about that. Yeah, it's a portal. It's no a doubt portal. about that. It's a portal. But I use that word Ouija board in the sense of to make people uncomfortable for a reason. Mm -hmm. Because if you start playing with this, we were just talking about this a couple of minutes ago, trying to get the answers that you want, guess what? You'll get them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Guess what? You'll get them right, and and don't think this is this is the whole thing about large um, 
large learning what was it um, large language models large language models it's like yo like i don't really care because guess what we can break down the the capillaries muscles sinews mm-hmm. of how the human body works that dude still got possessed by a demon and killed a bunch of people do that's you see right. what i'm saying that's right it, it, it doesn't it doesn't matter doesn't help like, it, it, it's just looking it's another body it's another way mm-hmm. for them to come into this realm and operate Speaking of, of interdimension of interdimensionary beings, right. like pay attention to what's being said, right? That's why it doesn't really matter what happened to Miami. If you try to bring everything full circle, it doesn't really matter because whether there's something really walking around, whether the whole right. thing was a deep fake by the government to get everybody ready for Project Blue Beam, mm-hmm. or or whether the whole thing got shut down. And they're like, they're reading your text from space. And like, it doesn't really matter because all three of those options are all ways that they are t- like, so the technocratic tyranny, the authoritarianism, yeah. it isn't just the evil of men anymore, any more bold, italicized, right? right. As, as it, though it ever fully was. As though it ever fully was, but right. definitely now, right? right. Like, this is what we're this is what we're dealing with right and this is why full circle we've said this before whatever you like i don't even like man you need to get on an arc i'm i'm telling mm-hmm. you because mm-hmm. th- this is the thing like this can't what what we're doing here can't ground you mm-hmm. like what grounds you Right for all that, all the good, God willing, you know, God will use us for all without for all that good. The thing that grounds you is the incarnational reality that's that's lived in the church by being amongst the body of people, being subject and accountable to church hierarchy, and participating in the sacraments. If you if you're mm-hmm. if you're lacking those things, right, and you and you haven't put the safeguards in there. So in other words, if you have an ex, if you have an extraordinary situation. And you haven't done the work to figure out what to do that will work for your situation. That's the problem, right? Everyone has a different situation. Well, guess what? God's got a solution for you. But you have to look for the solution. You can't just go like, well, it's good. No, no, no. You have to go like, okay, God, here's my situation. What do you want me to do? That's what you need to do. But That's- Father, forgive me. I mean, we talked and we talked about this before. There are some things that we might in this current age be able to say are things not to do. And like this might be instructive to the idea. I think what's the most interesting part is that I think we've all we all have a presupposition that we might need to throw away. And this will throw a wrinkle into the whole thing. Right. Is that like uh, this undread the blind, the Germanicist? I think our presupposition is that there's a human at the other end of that account. Man. But we already think, know yeah, yeah, that's that a piece Elon of Musk Elon Musk has already said he has an AI. The, the heaven banning thing that George Hotz talked about and Elon talked about himself. He said, oh, no, we're going to go ahead and people who want to argue online, we're going to give you somebody to argue with. Mm-hmm. Who's going to keep you engaged with the arguing. All we care about is the engagement. Mm-hmm. So if there was anybody that you would want to hit with the Mormon versus orthodoxy bot, Brother Augustine would be one of the people. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And this is and this was actually and it's very interesting because it was arguing about an argument about orthodox doctrine that I came to myself online back in April and realized I shouldn't even be having this mm-hmm. on Twitter is the reason why I left Twitter. Mm-hmm. Because exactly I, think- I said, oh, when the bots are introduced into this, they're going to have me. They're gonna. Insane. It's the They're demons gonna are gonna be insane. gonna have me going it's whole, crazy. It's a whole new logos, me. It's a whole new like incarnation. It's a whole new one. Mm-hmm. And so maybe one of the things not to do is like, maybe this is maybe this is a real good thing that it's like whether or not there was a human on the other end of this. At That's some good. point in the near future, there will not be. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hey, Sabrian, can we close this? Yeah. This, yeah. This because why does it bother you? <laughs> Well, yeah, I mean, like, I think it's, it's got that, like, as I sat with it more and more, it's got that, like, kind of mm-hmm. thing about it. It's like that. It's just like, and I was like, 
I'm all about, I'm, I'm not all about, I try to be all about not flinching, but at a certain point, it's just like, mm, all right, let, let's just, let's get this out of here. Let's, let's, uh, yeah. let's, um, yes. And I'm going to end on this because I do have Please to go. go. And, and so let's do it. Speaking of love, speaking of like acquiring love, there's a story in which, um, in the life of St. Paisios that I've been reading where there's a section of like his, his encounters, like, you know, him um, talking with St. Euphemia and then like him, his, um, the saint who baptized him, who I'm very sorry, forgive me. I don't remember his name off the top of my head. Arsenios? Uh, St. Arsenios. Thank you. Um, and one of them was that he was called up to heaven. I don't remember exactly what the context was, but it, they specifically pointed out um, that he walked in a way through heaven in which he was not seen by the people in damnation so that he would not further their grief. Like mm. he would not further their torture. Like, mm. oh my gosh, like mm. what the heck is that? Mm. Like he just, mm. it, everything was just like about others. Like the, everything was just like about like, okay, even in heaven. I mean, I would be so like, mm. I mean, I don't know what heaven is like, but I'd be so tempted to be like, all right, I'm here. The whole like me having to like walk on eggshells and be cool around it. It's like, it's done. I'm done. Like, I'm not doing this anymore. Like, and that's one of my, like, that's where I fall short. Cause it's like, okay, no, then you still haven't got it because <laughs> yeah, that should be transition. That should, that's what gets you there. And like you, that interchange is what will create heaven. But it's like the fact that like he it specifically mentions, like he like went out of his way so that they wouldn't see mm. him. Because them seeing him there would only add to their torment. And he's like, oh my gosh, like that's in incredible. Like, and I, it blew me away. It blew me away. Like, that's the kind of stuff that's like, where, el where else are you going to get that? You're not going to get that anywhere else. Like, you're never going to get like, like, where are your Protestant saints talking about that? Like, where are like, you know, where are the, like the people, where are the, I can't, where are the Mormons doing that? Like, no, nobody's doing anyway. Anyway, I'm. Well, they don't believe in heaven. They believe you get a planet of your own. Oh, well, so we can end on the aliens. Hot dog. You get a planet of your own with all the with with all your wives, and you get to repopulate a whole planet yourself. That's their like heaven. Freaking um, Prometheus. Sounds like that. something like that. Yeah, yeah. it's just like ugh, all right. <laughs> whatever. Um, but we'll come back to this. Because I, I do genuinely have to go, but we'll come back. To we this have more. Yet. We have more episodes in the future. I mean, we're not going to run out of material anytime soon. I can tell you that much. I mean, mm -hmm. like it's only going to because I mean, Father Sar or Saint Seraphim Rose. I think he says like, I think it's attributed to him. But the closer we get to the end times, the more like demonic, like uh, mm -hmm. the more the demonic powers will be evident. You know, it'll it'll mm -hmm. like it it just be like more and more than like you know the multi generational campaign. To normalize this stuff, to make it normal, you know, like whatever. Anyway, um, okay. So uh thank you, Jack. I'm gonna start with you because your um thumbnails are great. Thank you. You are uh the fourth member of this show, without a doubt. Um you you kill it. Uh thank you so much. He's Ringo. Ringo. <laughs> ah, nice. <laughs> yeah so wait that You're would george. Be, I'm, I'm george okay yeah okay that, i'm george oh boy father, and father john this father is my best rule father, father john lennon <laughs> yeah. of course he's john lennon what are you talking oh. about <laughs> of course oh he God. is <laughs> can we, can we... No, can we can we stop this? He's not Ringo. He's he's, he's Charlie Watts. Okay, he's fair Charlie enough. Charlie Watts. I'll I'll gladly take on being Keith. I'm not okay. Fair enough. I okay, can't be the thing, man. Don't do that to me. Don't do that to me, man. Didn't Charles Manson? I had to stop right there. I it's a good way. It's a good way to. It's a good way to, end, it's a good way to end it, though. It's a good way in to. End. My, in my almost fifty years of being alive, right? In my almost fifty years, that's the closest I've ever felt to playing Russian roulette. Who <laughs> 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 <So> will <laughs> I be? Who <laughs> will I be? Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm was... fake. I'm fake, Paul. So I mean, you know. <laughs> I mean, I'm always... and just so everybody understands. Listen, just so everybody. I've been to the island. He's real.
Who are you talking about? You. Fake Paul? Oh, me. You. Yeah, I am real. I am He's real. real. I am real. I've been to the island. <laughs> I've touched him. I've seen his wife and kids. He's real. <laughs> well, He's real. Father, until I rub my hand on his head and touch the, his shit. <laughs> I <am okay. laughs> Fair enough, dude. Fair enough. Um, <laughs> no, um, so no, don't listen to them. You, Jack, you're 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 a fourth you're the fourth member of the of the of the group. Um, you're not Ringo. I don't know. Maybe you are, it doesn't matter. Um <laughs> and speaking of music, anytime we mention someone, uh we try and throw it on the playlist, Royal Path Podcast playlist. It's on Spotify and now it's on Apple, I would think as well. I don't know what it's under. I it's can't been remember. on Apple, yeah. Royal, just look up Royal Path Podcast or just the uh, Royal Path, just the Royal Path. No, but I think the music, the playlist that I oh. Spotify. Oh, is it? Yeah, someone contacted me and said, would it be okay if I did this? Oh, like wow. Three days later, I got back to him. I was like, yeah, it'd be great. And we're like, well, cool, because it's already done. Oh I'm like, God. all right, well, that's my well, that's spiritual lesson in that um, awesome. on me. Um, and then... Um, I think the campaign is over or the, the drive that's the- over. Thank God. Thank you everyone who participated, met the goal. Glory to God. Thank you. Glory to God. But it's- still, if you're interested in the and I've talked to people that are interested, please reach out. Adam Lockridge, you want to get a school going. Even if you don't have the means yet, reach out to him and get something going. Cause mm-hmm. Orthodox education is the future of the church in America. Mm-hmm. There's no doubt. Like that's how you build an arc. How do I build an arc? Well, that's a part of it. You have to have education for your kids if you want to keep them in the church. So, I anyways, I don't remember. That. Besides, just a solid dude to talk to. He's just yeah. a great guy to talk to. I don't remember if Father said on this podcast. I think he might have that. Someone asked an elder, "How do we combat Islam?" And you said, "Orthodox Christians have more children. Have yep, have more, have more babies. Well, you need to put those babies somewhere where they learn education mm-hmm. properly, and then ain't in the public schools, and it ain't the Catholic schools. That's for sure. Um, so, um, so." Uh, aside from that, you know, still check out those resources, you know, the beautiful video on on the school and everything like that. W- wonderfully produced, wonderfully shot. Um, so. Coffee. Uh, hmm? Coffee. Yeah. Thank you. I was going to forget. OK, so what is it? Um, do we have the copy? I oh, do. I'm very sorry, Basil. You, didn't I send it to you? You did. So you guys got to talk for just one second. Uh, no, I'll do, I'll do it. I'll do okay. it. I'll do Thank it. you. Fine. I'm sure I can find it here. Somewhere. So also while you're doing that, I just want to give a, a shameless yeah. plug. Forgive me. But um, for those who are interested and um, they're out there, but also, you know, on the um, there's a couple of different channels where my homilies are, are put out. Yeah. Um, yes. On podcast, um, on Spotify. Mm -hmm. Um, also there's anchor FM, um, which has all the options, which is, if you go there, there's just a ton of great, um, Orthodox content, um, other great fathers and they're preaching and stuff like that. So homilies are really good. I just want to throw that out there because, you know, not everyone can do two and a half hours of just the rambling, but the, but the homilies are good and the context of the gospel. So especially for those of you who are in a situation where you don't have a parish, except for, you know, every once in a while, these online homilies are, are, I would encourage you, you know, get a homily, listen to it, you know, read the gospel. These are great ways to kind of supplement if you are in a tough spot where you don't have a community quite yet. So I just want to throw that out. Links links in the description. Links will be in the description. Big bonus to those homilies. I very rarely chip in. Very rarely does Father have me come up and do a homily. <laughs> it almost never happens, but um, you know, for those. Okay, so want, should I talk about the coffee? Scola yeah. Coffee, a pilot coffee roasting program from the Mount Tabor School, is excited to develop a coffee that brings the rich goodness of the Royal Path Podcast to your home cup of coffee in collaboration with the Royal Path Podcast. This blend is all about bold, rich flavors up front that finish smooth and creamy. With every bag sold, proceeds will go to furthering Orthodox Christian education for students at Mount Tabor School of the Liberal Arts and helping train students in the industry of coffee and the art of coffee roasting. Uh, if you want more, check out the link in the description for School of Coffee. Please give us free coffee, Basil. That would be great. Um, <laughs> so next shout out. Have- please check out the coffee. Please, those of you who are willing and able, you know, get in the link and get some coffee it'll actually really be a big help and it's good too yeah i haven't had it yet drink it yeah i haven't had it yet but i drink it every day oh well it must be nice 
Um, next is uh, Casper mattresses. I'm just kidding. <laughs> then after that, hello, oh, my um, pillow. <laughs> yeah, my pillow. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so oh um, I'm lightheaded. <laughs> Casper mattresses. Yeah, I mean that was like that was like the <laughs> the thing. Oh my gosh. Um. <laughs> Yeah, we're gonna end next this. week. I think that's we it. have like <laughs> patches. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! We just continue this to sell patch. out more and more. And more. <laughs> just have like cats and kids, like we just keep yeah, you guys with batteries. And all. At the end of your homily, it's like brought to you by my pillow. You know, like homily <laughs> brought to you by my pillow. Oh my god! That would be bad. Um, <laughs> I'm glad I didn't. Even, even though this homily was very exciting, you probably need to get a good sleep and you'll never get a better sleep except like the sleep you get with the mind pillow. Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> this homily was terrible. I'm too sleepy. You need a cup of skull and coffee. Yeah. <laughs> hey, guys. Just as we're entering Lenten season, where HelloFresh has vegan meals. It just, you can just set it all up and get a pre-prepared meal brought to you. Oh, man. <laughs> and uh, mention Father Turbo. Cute, cute <laughs> father turbo get 10 percent off your first order it's, um, or is the end better than the beginning like, <laughs> I, I mean this maybe is one of those times we should actually like cut this and use this yeah probably and people right. come back and find it at the end um and then also i'm glad we didn't end there because the contact at royal path network yep. again i said this last time that is how most people should reach out is contact at royal path network and i again ask for mercy our assistant is busy. She's a busy woman. She's got a, a full life of other things to do aside from answering emails for free for, um, you know, some people that she knows and, you know, her spiritual father and a couple of buddies. Um, but be merciful to her as far as, you know, when your responses come back and always, again, be merciful to me. It takes, it, I don't know why I'm just very bad at correspondence. Um, and I think that is it. Thank mm -hmm. you for having a good night. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.